Hello and welcome guys. Make yourselves comfortable and enjoy. Don't forget to go and support the original author. He put a lot of effort into this. Well, let's continue now. This is Necromancer of the Shadows. Chapter 351. You, what did you just say? Sebastian asked with his eyes wide open. He felt like his ears weren't working properly. I'm planning to kill Olivia tomorrow. That's why I tried to frame her thinking that it would be a good farewell. Gift said Evan once again in the same causal voice. Sebastian was stunned to hear the same thing once again, and just stared at him for a long time without saying anything. Evan also didn't say anything and just stood there without doing anything. Why? Why do you want to kill her? After a minute, Sebastian finally asked with a serious look on his face. Evan raised an eyebrow when he heard Sebastian and said in a joking tone, You are quite calm after hearing I am going to kill an A-plus rank hunter of the city. Could it be that you also want to kill that B-I asterisk H? Sebastian didn't answer and kept looking at him with the same serious face. Evan shook his head when he saw this and said, I think I have already told you the reason why I want to kill her. Are you talking about the articles she posted and what she did to you during the practical exam? Sebastian asked with a frown on his face. Yes, Evan nodded his head. Seeing Evan nodding his head an angry expression appeared on Sebastian's face. Just because of such a small thing you want to kill her, are you out of your mind? Small thing. The calm expressions on Evan's face also disappeared. Don't spout nonsense if you don't know anything, he said in a cold tone. Because of her stupid articles, he almost died back then. After the practical exam, he wanted to increase the rank of his monarch courtesy before going to Aquaville City. But because of her articles, he had to leave for Aquavalon City before advancing to the C rank where he was abducted by Layla. If it wasn't for the fact that he got enough cause from the Orc Den mission to advance to C rank, he would not have survived after being captured by Layla. He didn't tell Sebastian about Layla and all these things, because the original Layla is already dead, and the current Layla is a loser who is working for him. If he told him about her, then he would also have to explain to him about his shadow resurrection skill, and there is no way he is going to tell anyone about his shadow resurrection skill. This skill is his greatest trump card against anyone. Sebastian was taken aback when he saw Evan's cold look, and wasn't able to understand why he was angry. You need a good reason for me to kill her, right? Evan didn't care about Sebastian's confused look and continued to speak. Since he can't tell him how he almost died because of her, he will just tell him what he recently found out about Olivia. You know about Leon's death, right? He asked Sebastian who was still confused. Are you talking about the student of the academy who died recently because of the curse? Sebastian asked with a raised eyebrow. Yes, Evan nodded his head, Olivia was the one who placed that curse on him. What? Sebastian was baffled when he heard Evan and asked him, why would she place a curse on him? It was a restriction type curse, so it's clear she put it on him because she wanted to hide something Evan said, not forgetting what Elijah had told him about the curse. And what is she trying to hide? Sebastian asked with his eyes narrowed, dot, I think you should take a look at. Her connection with the Dark Guild Evan said with a cold smile on his face. Sebastian felt a chill running down his spine after hearing Evan. If what Evan just said is true, then the situation inside a straight city is very dangerous. Olivia is an A-plus rank hunter and the guild master of a gold rank guild. There are many dungeons which are controlled by her guild. Among these dungeons, few of them are A rank and many are at B rank and below. If she is really working with the Dark Guild and used the fetid miasma of the Dark Guild inside those dungeons, then she can cause many dungeon outbreaks at the same time that can endanger the safety of the city. Tell me everything you know. Sebastian took some deep breaths to calm down, and asked Evan in a dead serious voice. Evan also did not hide anything from him, and told him everything that Leon told him. So that Leon was also working for the Dark Guild. Sebastian muttered, remembering how Valerie was going to bring him into the Frost World dungeon with her. If it was anyone else, Sebastian would not immediately believe him. But since it was Evan who provided Valerie with information about the Dark Guild, he could not ignore what Evan had just said. Plus because of his skill, he could easily tell that Evan was not lying. If you knew she is collaborating with the Dark Guild, then why didn't you inform anyone about it? Sebastian asked, looking at Evan with narrowed eyes. I was thinking about taking care of her by myself, 
So why would I inform anyone about it, said Evan, looking straight into Sebastian's eyes. Sebastian looked at Evan for quite some time before shaking his head. Forget about this matter. I will take care of it by myself, Sebastian said, thinking about paying a visit to Olivia. Hey, hey, I think I should be the one saying this. Evan immediately said when he heard Sebastian. Is this guy joking? Olivia is an A-plus rank hunter, which means another A-plus rank shadow undead for his army. There is no way he is going to let this guy mess with his future shadow undead. Plus, she is an A-plus rank hunter. I am sure I will be able to get many good things from her. You don't have to worry about Olivia. I will be the one taking care of her. Evan said with a serious look on his face. This was the first time Sebastian saw a serious look on Evan's face. But he still shook his head. You don't understand. If she is really working with the Dark Guild, then the safety of the entire city is on the line. I can't let you handle such a serious matter all by yourself. And since she is an A-plus rank hunter, then there is a very high chance that we might be able to get some useful information about the Dark Guild from her. You don't have to tell me I understand the situation, alright? Evan said in a confident-filled voice. Just give me two days and I will take care of this matter. As for the information, Evan showed a warm smile to Sebastian. Believe me, there is no one better than me when it comes to collecting information from my enemy. Chapter 352 Evan returned to his room and fell on the bed with a tired expression on his face. After reassuring Sebastian again and again, that he will get all the information from Olivia, he was finally able to persuade him to stay away from this matter. But Sebastian also warned him that if something happened inside the city because of Olivia, he will have to take full responsibility for that. Evan had no problem with this because he was planning to take care of Olivia, before she could do anything. Damn, his whole conversation took longer than I expected, muttered Evan, rubbing his face. He thought he would be able to come back to sleep after telling them that he knew nothing about Golden Lightning, but it took longer than expected because of Sebastian. If not for the fact that he knew I was the one who killed Adam, I would have never told him that I am going to kill Olivia. If he killed Olivia without telling Sebastian, Evan was sure that Sebastian would suspect him because of what he did with Adam. So instead of telling him about Olivia after killing her, he told him everything before killing her. That brain dead woman went for a dungeon exploration without giving me my gauntlets. Evan said in a grumpy voice because of what Sebastian, he was trying to contact her after coming back from Nafliam City, but he wasn't able to contact her. Earlier he asked Sebastian about her, and he told him that she went for a dungeon exploration to train herself before the tournament, and it will take around 10 days before she will come back. He asked Sebastian if he knew the status of his gauntlet, but he just left from there without telling him anything. Evan closed his eyes and scanned his shadow storage. All of his shadow undeads were inside his shadow storage doing their own things. He ignored them and looked at the remaining cores inside his shadow storage. I did not expect that I would have to use so many cores to increase the rank of my prime core to B+, muttered Evan, feeling speechless because of the gluttonous nature of his calls. Most of the cores I have now are from Thornbloom's monsters I have saved, so I can get their energy absorption skill, and merge it with the devouring skill. Other than those calls, Evan had one A plus rank core that he got from the bear he killed in the wilderness, when he reached the C rank, and one A rank core that he got from Layla's storage ring. I will absorb them later after getting enough rest, Evan said, and was about to close his eyes to sleep when he noticed something. F U asterisk K, how can I forget about it? Evan shouted and sat up. Soon a storage ring came out of his shadow storage, and his eyes shined like stars. I think you should take a look at. Let's see what kind of inheritance Guildmaster Adam left for me, Evan said, and linked the storage ring with himself. Evan's whole body was shaking because of excitement. Checking the loot after killing your enemy is the best part after all. When his sense enter inside the ring the first thing he saw was some clothes. Evan was used to seeing useless things. So he ignored them and looked at other things. But soon his expressions go weird and weird to worse. What kind of storage ring is this? Evan cursed out loud because other than clothes, there was nothing inside the storage ring. He carefully scanned the ring a few more times but found there was nothing inside it. Could it be that he has another storage ring? Evan said as he scanned Adam's entire body with his spiritual senses, thinking he might have hidden his original storage ring in a secret pocket or something. 
There is nothing. But Evan found nothing even after scanning Adam's body with his spiritual senses. He looked at the storage ring in his hands. And was not able to believe that he got this ring from an A-rank hunter. I will have to ask Adam's shadow undead what the hell is wrong with this ring Evan said. And threw the ring back into his shadow storage. He looked at Adam's body which was inside his shadow storage for a moment before laying down on his bed. I can't use my shadow resurrection skill inside the academy. That old stalker is also here. Who knows if he decided to peek at me for a random reason. Evan stopped looking inside his shadow storage and closed his eyes. Other than absorbing remaining calls to get energy absorption skill and turn Adam into a shadow undead. I also have to test the new strength of my shadow undeeds. The power of his shadow undeads increased greatly because of his growth link skill. So he wanted to know the current power limit of his shadow undeads. I also have to get a better understanding of my current powers. I was not able to use my powers properly while fighting against Adam. Because my rank increased very quickly. Soon Evan falls asleep thinking about the things he needs to do. He was continuously absorbing calls for the past few days. And was not able to sleep properly because of it. He slept like a dead log for more than 8 hours, and woke up in the evening. After waking up he left the academy and went towards one of the training centers of the city. He decided to not train inside the academy because of Nathan. Even though all the training rooms inside the academy are separated from each other, and give good privacy to students, he was afraid that Nathan will see him training with his shadow undeads. Soon Evan reached one of the training centers of the city, and after paying a hefty price to train inside an A-rank training room, he went inside it. Chapter 353 Gorm Dash Elijah flew backwards like a broken kite, and crashed into the wall of the training room. Okay stop said Evan and fell to the ground. His entire body was drenched in sweat, and he was panting heavily. It has been 6 hours since he started his training inside the training room. After coming here the first thing he did was to test the power of all of his shadow undeads. Elijah, Necros, Akau and Eclipse were already stronger than normal B plus rank monsters. And Evan was quite excited to test their new strength. And he was not disappointed by their growth. Now Necros and Aqua were on par with Elijah before she received the power boost from the growth link skill. Elijah on the other hand now can fight against A rankers. But the shadow undead that surprised Evan the most was definitely Eclipse. Previously Eclipse was at B rank, but because of the growth link, it broke through to B plus rank. Even after reaching B plus rank, its overall power is a little weaker than Necros and Aqua. But its stealth related abilities received a great boost after it advanced to B plus rank. With its current skills, it can become a very good assassin, and can easily kill hunters or monsters who are at B plus rank. But the most surprising thing that Evan found was that after reaching to B plus rank, Eclipse got a new skill. Evan thought that since his shadow undeads are not actually alive, they would only get an increase in power, due to his growth link skill. But to his surprise, when he was testing Eclipse's power, it told him that it got a new skill, after reaching to B plus rank. And the skill it received was not a normal skill. The skill it received was a unique skill. Eclipsing Strike, Unique Skill. You can summon a temporary solar eclipse for 3 minutes, shrouding the area in darkness. During this time, you will gain immense power. Cooled down time. 4 hours. Evan was able to see the details of Eclipse's new skill, due to the second effect of his growth link skill. Although the second effect of his growth link is still cooling down, he can still see the details of the skill that his shadow undeads possess. When Evan first read the description of the skill, he didn't find it special, and thought it is a weak unique skill. But when he asked Eclipse to use the skill he was completely stunned. Only after seeing Eclipse using the skill did he find out just how ridiculous this skill is. I should not underestimate a skill just because of its simple description. Evan thought and looked at his right side with his mouth twitching. Hey Adam, I already said stop. Why are you still not retrieving your gravitational field? Evan asked looking at a humanoid shadow undead who was looking like Adam. Sorry, master. Adam immediately stopped using his gravitational field on Evan after hearing him. Just as Adam stopped using his skill, Evan felt his body becoming lighter, and his tense muscles relaxed. I think you should take a look at. He turned Adam into a shadow undead after he got into the training room. When he used his shadow resurrection skill on him, 
he fell the first two times. Failing twice, Evan was scared and thought that Adam's body would explode. Just like what happened to the A-plus rank bear in the wilderness. But luckily he succeeded on his third attempt. After turning him into a shadow undead, he also asked him why there was nothing inside his storage ring. After hearing the reason why his storage ring was empty, Evan could not help but laugh. According to Adam, both he and Jack did not bring anything in their storage ring because of what Evan did to Jack in their past two encounters. Before coming, Jack told Adam about his hobby of robbing storage rings. Even though Adam was certain that Evan will not be able to escape from him, he still did not bring anything with him inside his storage ring, so that even if Evan was somehow able to escape from the barrier, he would not be able to get anything from him. Evan also asked him how he sent him inside that barrier after leaving the dungeon, and finds out that Adam used a one-time use artifact to send him inside the barrier. Evan was disappointed when he heard this because he thought Adam used one of his skills to teleport him there. If Adam had a teleportation type skill he would take it using his growth link skill. After all a teleportation type skill could save his life at a crucial moment. After getting a better understanding of the new powers of his shadow undeads, he started his own training. He asked Adam to use his gravitational field on him during training because training inside the gravitational field was far more beneficial than normal training. Evan took out his phone and saw that it was already midnight. I still need a little more training before I can properly control my powers, muttered Evan, and rested for an hour before starting his training once again. He trained all night and left the training center at 6 in the morning. Evan yawned after leaving the training center, but there was a satisfied smile on his face. I should be able to take care of that bitch now, muttered Evan and started walking towards the academy. He was completely exhausted after training all night, and just wanted to take a good nap. I told Sebastian that I will take care of Olivia today. Looks like I won't be able to sleep tonight as well, Evan said while taking out his phone. He sent a message to Sebastian asking him to give him some basic information about Olivia. After sending him a message Evan pondered for a moment before calling Terry. Why isn't he picking up the phone? Muttered Evan when Terry didn't pick up the call. He called him a few more times, but Terry still didn't pick up the phone. Maybe he is still sleeping. Evan muttered since it was still 6 in the morning and decided to call him later. After coming back to his room at the academy, he lay down on the bed and immediately fell asleep while thinking about how he will deal with Olivia tonight. Chapter 354 7 o'clock in the evening Still not picking up her Evan muttered and put away his phone with a frown on his face. He had been trying to contact Terry for quite some time, but he was not able to get in touch with him. He even tried to contact other members of Terry's gang, but he still was not able to contact them. He wanted to ask Terry to keep an eye on Olivia. Evan knew it is impossible for Terry and his gang to follow Olivia all the time, like how they followed Leon. After all, unlike Leon, Olivia is an A-plus rank hunter, and if Terry and the other members of his gang try to follow her, she'll be able to easily notice them. But Evan didn't need them to follow her, he just wanted to ask them to inform him when she leaves her guild building. He was thinking about taking care of her tonight, but he could not attack on her as long as she stays inside the guild building. There would be many people inside her guild, and he didn't want to fight against her with so many people around him. If he fights against Olivia when there are many people around him, there is a high probability that many people will die. Olivia is an A-plus rank hunter who is even more powerful than Adam. If she also goes berserk just like him, the damage she will cause will be far greater than him. Unlike the area that Adam destroyed, the Twilight Guild is located in the bustling area of the city. If she uses any destructive skill there, it will be disastrous for the normal people. And Evan knew that if anything like this happened, he would have to deal with Sebastian. Which is why he is thinking about making his move when she leaves her guild building. He asks Sebastian to give him some basic details about Olivia, like where she lives or does anyone lives with her. Sebastian sent him her information not long ago, and surprisingly according to the information he received from him, Olivia leaves alone, and there is not even a maid in her house. After knowing she lives alone and the location of her home, Evan already knew how to take care of her without causing any damage. Looks like I will have to wait outside of her guild building by myself. Evan sighed when he was not able to contact Terry and left the academy. After coming out he used Shadow Wing's skill, 
and flew towards the Twilight Guild. Because of his high speed, it didn't take him long before he reached near the Twilight Guild. The territory of the Twilight Guild was quite large and covered an area of about 10 kilometers. Most of the territory of the guild was occupied by the training grounds. Evan was floating high in the sky, and because of his hawk's eye skill, he could see many hunters who were training in the outside training ground of the guild. Did not expect that I will have to do this kind of boring work, Evan thought to himself while looking down from the sky. Five minutes later, damn, I can't take it anymore. Evan cursed while rubbing his temples. In just five minutes, he finds out that this kind of work is not suitable for him. I think you should take a look at. These five minutes felt like five hours to him, and most importantly, he realized that he could not see inside the guild building using his spiritual senses. I thought that using my spiritual senses, I would be able to confirm whether or not Olivia is inside the building, but I didn't expect that the building would be protected by a formation, Evan said with a deep frown on his face. I can't wait for her here without confirming if she's inside the building Evan muttered while rubbing his chin. Suddenly a bold idea came into Evan's mind. He thought about it for a moment and soon an evil smile appeared on his face. If this thing works, I won't have to wait for her here. Slowly Evan's appearance started to change. His short black hair turned into long red hair, his black eyes turned red, and in less than a minute he was looking like Margaret. Margaret is one of the S-rank hunters of a start city, so it is normal that Evan knew about her. Margaret is famous throughout the city for her short temper and unruly attitude. Evan used Aluja's skill to change his appearance into her. Now that he is looking like Margaret, all he has to do is go inside the guild building with an arrogant look, and ask Olivia to come with him. He didn't use Sebastian's appearance because that man knew about his appearance changing skill. And as for using Nathan's appearance, he just cannot act like an old man. So the most suitable person that came into his mind was Margaret. Evan flew some distance away from the airspace of the Twilight Guild and landed without attracting anyone's attention. He was wearing black jeans and a black shirt, so he was not looking strange even after changing his appearance. He walked towards the guild building with a casual expression on his face. He was looking very calm from the outside, but in reality, he was feeling quite nervous as he was not sure whether his plan would work or not. When the security guard standing at the door of the guild building saw Margaret coming, he was stunned. When Evan came near him the security guard did not react for quite some time and just stood there without doing anything. When Evan came near the guard, he noticed that along with shock, there was also a confused expression on the face of the security guard. Evan could understand why the guard was shocked after seeing Margaret but he could not understand why he was looking at him with a confused expression. But Evan did not care too much about his expression and was about to open the glass door when someone else opened it from inside. When Evan saw the door open, he maintained his casual and aloof expression. After all, he is currently an S-rank hunter and cannot fluster over such a small thing. But when he saw who it was who opened the door, his casual and aloof expression completely disappeared. I am dead. Evan shouted inwardly when he saw a woman with red hair and red eyes standing in front of him. Chapter 355 So someone fooled me ha thought Margaret as she left Olivia's office. After seeing Olivia inside the mana storm yesterday, she thought Olivia was the one who caused all the commotion yesterday. But after investigating the matter carefully, she came to know that she had been fooled by someone. I will definitely find the bastard who fooled me, thought Margaret and opened the door to exit the building. But as soon as she opened the door, she was stunned. What fool put this mirror right in front of the door? Margaret said with annoyance on her face, but soon realized something was not quite right. She noticed that the clothes and the expressions of her reflection looks completely different from hers. What should I do? What should I do? Evan used his mind to its full capacity to find a solution for his current situation. He never thought that he would encounter Margaret here. He knew that he had fooled her yesterday, but he thought that she must have already found out that it was not Olivia who caused all the commotion yesterday and would have already left from here. While thinking Evan suddenly realized another problem. I can't speak in front of her. Chameleon illusion skill allows someone to change their appearance but it does not change their voice. Evan was aware of this problem even before he changed his appearance, but he didn't care about it at that time. 
because he wasn't planning to speak after going inside. He made a very simple plan before going inside. Margaret is famous for her unruly behavior, so after going inside, he was thinking of behaving like a cocky woman, who can't be bothered to open her mouth in front of these lowly creatures. Since she is an S-rank hunter employee of the guild will definitely inform Olivia that she came here. After knowing Margaret is here, Olivia will come to meet him, but he will not speak anything even in front of her, and will just single her from his eyes to follow him. Even though Olivia will find it strange, she will still follow her thinking that Margaret wants to tell her about the person who framed her. When she will follow him, he will bring her away from the guild, and will be done with her. The plan was quite simple, but the chances of success were very high. But now that he is standing in front of real Margaret, can he still act like a cocky woman? Knowing her personality she will burn him alive the moment he will try to act cocky in front of her especially using her own face. Who are you? The moment Margaret realized there was no mirror in front of her she asked in a cold voice while locking a fraction of her aura on Evan. She didn't use her full power because in her eyes the fake Margaret is just a normal person. She wasn't able to sense any mana from her body. The reason she wasn't able to sense Evan is a hunter was because of his recently merged skill. Shrouding Shadow Wings. Evan felt the surroundings around him became a little heavy, because Margaret used her aura to intimidate him. Even though this kind of pressure was nothing to him he still showed a scared expression. Then suddenly an idea came into his mind. Un un. Evan made some strange voice from his mouth. He was still showing scared expressions, but his eyes were shining like stars and he was looking at Margaret like she is his idol. Margaret raised an eyebrow when she saw how fake Margaret was looking at her. Who are you? The pressure around Evan decreased quite a bit, and Margaret asked once again. Un un. Evan once again didn't speak and just made some sound while pointing at his mouth. I think you should take a look at. Is she mute? Margaret thought when she saw fake Margaret pointing at her mouth. Are you mute? Margaret asked Evan who nodded his head after hearing her. Suddenly Evan took out his phone and started typing something. When Margaret saw this, she understood what fake Margaret was doing and did not stop her. After a few seconds, Evan showed her his phone screen. Hello, I am Mia. I am your biggest fan, can you give me your autograph? Margaret read the message that Evan typed and made a strange face. I thought she was going to tell me why her face is looking like me. Margaret thought and held herself back to not curse the mute Margaret. I don't care if you're my fan or my sister, Margaret said, and looked at Evan with narrowed eyes. Tell me what is wrong with your face. Fake M-A-R-G-A-I-E-T Evan made an embarrassed face when he heard Margaret and started typing once again. After a few seconds, he once again showed his phone screen to her. You are my idol and the most beautiful woman in this world. I wanted to look like you so I used makeup to change my face. Margaret read what Evan typed and looked at him with a face that was literally saying, Do I look like an idiot? Although she was glad when fake Margaret called her the most beautiful woman in the world, she still felt like this woman is looking down on her IQ level. She is also a woman and knew how makeup works. There is no way someone can change their face to this degree using makeup. When Evan saw how Margaret was looking at him, he scratched the back of his head, looking like he was feeling embarrassed. Margaret's eyes can't help but twitch when she saw this. But suddenly she saw the fake Margaret take out a handkerchief. After taking out the handkerchief Evan turned around and started wiping his face with it. Was she telling the truth? Margaret can. T help but say, thinking fake Margaret was wiping her makeup using the handkerchief. One minute later fake Margaret stopped wiping her face and turned around. When real Margaret saw Evan's new face she was completely dumbstruck. The fake Margaret was now looking like fake Angelina Jolie with red eyes. Who was this makeup artist who did this kind of godly job Margaret can't help but think when she saw how Evan's face changed after she wiped it with a handkerchief. Of course, there was no makeup on Evan's face. He just used his skill to change his face while wiping it with the handkerchief. Can you give me your autograph now? Evan typed once more and looked shyly at Margaret. He was looking like a complete fool who had just seen his idol. Margaret nodded her head blankly, still not wanting to believe on the sh asterisk t she had just seen. Evan took out a book and a pen and handed them to Margaret who signed the book and gave it back to Evan, who showed a fake happy smile. 
after getting Margaret's autograph. Although I am happy you see me as your idol, but don't use my face in the future, okay? Margaret said to fake Angelina Jolie, and started to walk away from there. Even if someone gives me money, I will never use your face again. Evan said inwardly inside in relief. Let's see if I can look for Olivia. Evan thought and was about to enter the building when he felt a hand on his shoulder. Wait. He heard Margaret's voice and felt his heart skip a beat. Chapter 356. Evan turned around and saw Margaret standing just behind him. Here, take it. She took out a black card from her storage ring and gave it to him. If you need any help in the future, just come to Raven Black Guild and show this card. Evan took the card and looked at Margate with a fake gratitude filled look. Margaret smiled upon seeing Evan's grateful look and left from there. I will ask about the makeup artist who did her makeup when she will come to see me. Margaret thought while walking away from there. Evan watched her walking away, and only when she disappeared from his sight, did he turn around to enter the building. The security guard who was watching everything got totally confused when he saw the strange way of conversation between two perfect looking women. Evan looked at the guard from the corner of his eyes and went inside the building. He was totally embarrassed because of the way he just talked with Margaret. Damn it. I can't believe I had to butter up an old hag like this. Even though Margaret looks like someone who is just in her late 20s, she is actually at least 60 years old. Evan wanted nothing more than to leave from there, but he still had to confirm whether Olivia was inside the building. Now, I can't act cocky here. Evan thought, looking at the security guard who was standing outside. If he tries to act cocky now, that security guard will definitely expose that he is not real Margaret. Let's see if I can search for Olivia using my spiritual senses. Evan said inwardly and used his spiritual senses once again. Normally high-ranking hunters could feel when people use their spiritual senses on them, just like how Evan was able to feel when Nathan used his spiritual senses on him. But if the spiritual power of the person who is using spiritual senses is more powerful than you, then you won't feel anything even when he uses his spiritual senses on you. Currently, Evan's spiritual power was almost comparable to an S-rank hunter, so he was not worried that Olivia will detect him. His spiritual senses spread outward and immediately covered the entire building. Evan was delighted when he saw that he could use his spiritual sense inside the building, but soon his expression fell once again when he saw that most of the rooms inside the building were protected by formations, and he cannot see inside them. Do I have to wait for her outside like an idiot? Evan frowned and tried to use his spiritual power to its limits. But even after trying his best, he could not see inside the rooms because of the formations. Looks like I will just have to wait outside of the guild. Evan thought and was about to withdraw his spiritual senses, when he suddenly noticed something. Although he was not able to see inside most of the rooms using his spiritual senses, he noticed that he could see inside some of the rooms, which were located in the basement of the guild building. These rooms were also protected by the formations, but these formations were clearly weaker than the other formations of the building. When Evan looked inside those rooms he saw some people with haggard appearances were impassioned in them. Evan raised an eyebrow when he saw those people, but did not care too much about them, because it is quite normal for guilds to imprison criminals. He looked into other rooms as well, and was surprised when he saw monsters locked in one of the rooms. I think you should take a look at. They must have captured them to train their new hunters. Evan thought when he saw most of the monsters were E or D rank. Let's just wait outside instead of wasting time here. Evan thought when he did not find anything and was about to leave when he saw something in one of the rooms. What the hell is this? Evan shouted out loud inside his mind when he saw many humans hanging upside down in one of the rooms. All of them were covered in blood and there were brutal injuries all over their bodies. Evan tried to sense their life force, and found all of them were dead. It seems that all these people were brutally tortured before they were killed. Evan thought and shook his head. Suddenly his eyes fell on a man who was hanging upside down, and he felt that the man looked familiar to him. Evan looked at the man closely using his spiritual senses, and saw even his face was completely ruined. His whole body was filled with burn and whip marks, and one of his eyes was missing. Evan frowned when he saw this and felt quite uncomfortable. But suddenly his whole body trembled when he carefully looked at the ruined face of the man. He started to take deep breaths and felt his heart becoming heavier. 
He looked at the faces of other people who were hanging in the room, and was able to recognize a few of them. This bitch. Anger welled up inside Evan when he finally realized why the man's face seemed familiar to him. The people who were hanging inside the room were actually Terry and his gang. She must have found out that Terry and others were keeping an eye on Leon and caught them. Evan's heart pounded in his chest, his breaths becoming heavy and rapid. For the second time in this life, he felt as if a storm of emotions was raging within him. The first time was when he saw the dream in Nathalem City. The torrent of emotions he was currently feeling was way weaker than what he felt after seeing the dream, but his anger was rising as time passes. Why am I getting so angry when I don't even know them properly? Evan was confused when he felt his messed up emotions. He was not able to understand why he is feeling so much anger because of their death. As he looked at the hanging bodies of Terry and others, his mind started to become cloudy because of the anger. His anger rose to such a level that a dangerous aura started to come out of his body. He even forget that he was still inside the Twilight Guild. Just as he was about to lose control over his emotions, some notifications started to flash on his status window. Your title question mark question mark question mark is reacting. Your title question mark question mark question mark is reacting. Chapter 357. Your title question mark question mark question mark is reacting. These notifications kept appearing and disappearing at lightning speed on Evan's status window. Unlike normal notifications which never disappear, these notifications immediately disappeared from his status window, after flashing on it for a brief second. They were so fast that Evan wasn't even aware of them. As notifications flashed on his status window, Evan felt the anger he was feeling begin to disappear, and his heavy and rapid breathing returned to normal. Evan's eyes, which were full of anger a moment ago, started to turn cold, and there was no emotion visible in them except coldness. The people who were present in the guild building looked in Evan's direction with uncertainty. Just a moment ago they felt a dangerous aura coming out of his body. But that aura suddenly disappeared, and now they were feeling a bone-chilling coldness coming out of his body. The temperature around him began to drop. When people looked into his deep red eyes, they felt they were looking into an abyss. Suddenly Evan's spiritual power surged, and his spiritual senses became even more powerful. The formations covering the rooms of the guild building were not able to block his powerful spiritual senses, and he was finally able to see inside all the rooms. Evan's face remained cold even when he was able to see inside the rooms. He searched all the rooms one by one, and after a few seconds, he finally saw Olivia inside one of the rooms. Olivia, who had been sitting in a chair with her eyes closed, suddenly felt a bone-chilling coldness and a shiver ran down her spine. She stood up from her chair and started looking around warily. Suddenly the coldness she was feeling disappeared, and the atmosphere in the room returned to normal. When the coldness suddenly disappeared, a confused expression appeared on Olivia's face. She looked at her hands and saw they were trembling. What the hell was that coldness? Olivia muttered while gulping down her saliva. Evan withdraws his spiritual senses after seeing Olivia. He closed his eyes for a brief moment, and looked at the hanging bodies of Terry and his gang one last time. Your title question mark question mark question mark is reacting. Your title question mark question mark question mark is reacting. When he looked at the hanging bodies, the cold aura around him intensified even more. He opened his eyes and started to walk towards the door of the building. As the people saw Evan leaving they all sighed in relief. For some reason all of the people present there were feeling very uncomfortable when they looked at Evan. What the hell was wrong with that woman? A man asked while looking at Evan, fake Angelina Jolie. You can go and ask her if you are so curious the woman standing beside him said while wiping the cold sweat from her forehead. When Evan came out, the security guard who was standing at the door felt all hairs on his body stand up to no end. I think you should take a look at. He took a step back and cold sweat started trickling down from his forehead. What happened to this mute beauty? The security guard thought inwardly feeling a fear like never before. Just a few moments ago he saw how Evan, fake Angelina Jolie, was talking with Margaret with a shy look on her face. But now when he looked at her face, he felt his body freezing because of fear. Evan completely ignored the security guard and left from there without stopping. He went into an alley and after seeing that no one was there, his appearance began to return to normal. He doesn't know what happened to him, but at the moment he was not feeling any emotion. Even after leaving the guild building, 
His face showed no emotion and remained the same. He used shadow wings and flew into the sky. Using the shadow wings he returned to the Twilight Moon Guild's airspace. He was floating quite high in the sky so the other people were not able to see him. After stopping there he continued to look at the guild building with cold eyes. Unlike before when he lost patience in just 5 minutes. This time he did not feel annoyed even after 3 hours. After 3 hours of waiting Evan finally saw Olivia coming out of the building and heading towards the parking lot. Your title question mark question mark question mark is reacting. Your title question mark question mark question mark is reacting. When Evan saw Olivia, the coldness in his eyes increased even more. After getting in her car, Olivia drove to the south side of the city where her home was located. Evan followed her using shadow wings and kept looking at her car. Olivia was looking very uncomfortable while driving because she was feeling a cold gaze on her since the moment she left the guild building. What the hell is this uncomfortable feeling? Olivia used her spiritual senses to look around in her surroundings. Evan felt a powerful spiritual sense sweeping the area, but he was very high in the sky, so he did not care about it. Olivia scanned the area around her using her spiritual senses, but didn't find anything strange. I might be just overthinking Olivia said to herself and stopped using her spiritual senses. I still need to find the A-asterisk shoal who framed me and sent that psychopath woman to my guild. After 30 minutes of driving Olivia's car stopped in front of a large mansion. The door of the mansion opened on its own, and she drove her car inside. Evan looked at her as she parked the car and came out of it. Seeing Olivia coming out of the car Evan didn't do anything. Soon Olivia left the parking lot and went inside the mansion building. Evan waited for another hour after Olivia went inside the building. After one hour Evan's eyes flashed with cold eyes and he waved his hand. Let's start. Just as he waved his hand a silver colored bow with many different kinds of runes engraved on it appeared in his hands. Chapter 358 Evan looked at the big mansion coldly. Your title question mark question mark question mark is reacting. Your title question mark question mark question mark is reacting. The notifications were still kept appearing and disappearing on his status window. He waved his hand and a silver colored bow appeared in his hands. Moonlit bow, a rank. A bow carved from ancient moonwood infused with lunar magic. When an arrow is drawn and released from the bow, it glows with soft silvery light granting it enhanced accuracy and the ability to pierce through magical barriers. In the light of the full moon, the bow's power is further amplified, and its arrows can channel moonlight to heal or weaken its target at the will of its owner. Evan aimed the bow towards the mansion, and activated the wind manipulation skill. As he used wind manipulation, an arrow began to form in the bow. The color of the arrow was light green, and as he added more mana to it, the color of the arrow started changing to dark green. In just one minute, the color of the arrow turned so dark that it started to look like a black arrow. Albelu. Evan said in an icy cold voice, and a five meter tall black wolf with a large horn on its forehead appeared behind him. After appearing, Albelu started to pour its lightning mana into the moonlit bow. Crackle exclamation point. Lightning arcs started to crackle around the dark green arrow, and a destructive aura spread in the surroundings. In just a few seconds, the entire dark green arrow was crackling with purple lightning. The wind and lightning elements inside the arrow were completely chaotic. The power of the arrow reached to such a degree that even the space around it started to twist. Normally it would have been impossible, but Evan used a small amount of shadow energy. While creating the arrow, because of the shadow energy, the destructive power of the arrow reached a completely different level. The moonlit bow which was just an A-rank artifact started to shake because of the destructive power of the arrow. When Evan saw the bow was at its limits, he signaled Albelu to stop. Just as Albelu stopped, A1, A2 and Adam also came out of Evan's shadow storage. Cover the entire mansion Evan said without taking his eyes off the moonlit bow. Crackle exclamation point. Purple lightning crackled around Albelu, A1 and A2. The long horns on their forehead lit up, and a lightning dome covered the entire mansion. Adam also used his skill and reinforced the lightning barrier with his gravitational shield. Olivia was about to go to sleep when she suddenly felt a devastating aura enveloping her entire mansion. Immediately she thought of the cold feeling she had been feeling while coming back, and a serious expression appeared on her face. 
She immediately took out her A plus rank armor and wore it. The armor was green in color, and many different kinds of runes were engraved on it. Just as she finished wearing the armor, from the window she saw a lightning dome covering her entire mansion. Olivia's heart trembled when she saw the lightning dome, because she could feel she can't break this dome. The dome was created by Evan's four strongest shadow undeads, so it was normal that Olivia could not break it. I think you should take a look at. Suddenly a feeling of dread engulfed her body, and her instincts started to scream, warning her about the impending doom. When Evan saw the entire mansion was perfectly covered by the lightning barrier, he did not wait any longer and released the arrow. Wilsh dash. The arrow turned into a streak of dark greenish purple light and went towards the mansion. Just as Evan released the arrow, Olivia also came out of the mansion. Because of the arrow's lightning speed, she was just able to see a streak of dark green light. That was releasing a destructive aura struck the mansion. The moment the arrow struck the mansion, the world seems to hold its breath. An eerie silence descends upon the area, as if nature itself recoils from the malevolence unleashed. When Olivia saw the streak of light hit her mansion, all the hairs on her body stand up to no end, and even before she could react, her protective artifact activated on its own. Bujom. A colossal explosion of wind and lightning erupted as the arrow struck the mansion's structure. A deafening roar shook the very foundations of the earth, and a blinding flash of blue-white light engulfed the estate. Arg. Olivia was blown away by the shockwaves, along with the barrier created by her life-saving artifact. She crashed against the lightning barrier of Albello and others, which was also shaking, because of the powerful impact of the arrow. The arrow's impact tore through the mansion's foundation, triggering a chain reaction that resulted in a devastating collapse. Olivia didn't even recover after being blasted away by the shockwaves. When she saw a storm of wind and lightning erupt from the center of the mansion, where the arrow struck earlier. Crackle. The wind howled and the lightning crackled as both chaotic elements destroyed everything that came into their path. An expression filled with horror appeared on Olivia's face as she saw the storm of wind and lightning coming towards her. Crack dot dot crack. When the wind lightning storm collided against Olivia's barrier, it started to crack. F.U. asterisk K. Olivia cursed out loud and created another barrier to reinforce her artifact barrier. Crack crack. But the devastating storm was too powerful. And even after strengthening the barrier, cracks continued to grow on it. Damn it. Olivia looked inside her storage ring and took out a piece of silver colored paper. A strange rune was engraved on the silver colored paper. After taking out the paper she attached it to the barrier. Just as she attached it to the barrier the rune which was engraved on it lit up and covered the entire barrier in a silver colored light. When the silver colored light enveloped the barrier, the cracks on it started to disappear and its defensive power increased to another level. Olivia sighed in relief when she saw this and was about to look for the person who attacked her when some powerful auras covered the surroundings. Howl! Howl! Crackle! The howls of wolves reverted in the area and the sky was suddenly filled with purple lightning. Chapter 359 Howl Dash Howl Dash Olivia was shocked when she suddenly felt the aura of an A plus rank monster and three A rankers. She looked up, and her body shuddered when she saw three black colored lightning wolves with a humanoid monster staring at her. The top of the lightning dome which was covering the entire mansion was crackling with purple lightning arcs. There were hundreds of lightning arcs, and they were moving all over like snakes. What the hell is going on here? Olivia muttered with a face full of disbelief when she saw four high-ranking monsters. She was still inside a start city, so she could not understand how these high-ranking monsters could come here. But the next seconds her eyes almost popped out of their sockets, when she saw a person was standing at the back of the a plus rank lightning wolf. The entire place was illuminated by the purple lightning arcs, so she was easily able to see the face of the person who was standing at the back of the wolf. How is this possible? Olivia asked with her eyes wide open when she saw Evan standing at the back of the wolf, while holding his moonlit bow. He was wearing his purple black sunfire armor. Even though the armor was purplish black, it didn't look eerie at all because of its special properties. Because of the sunfire armor and the moonlit bow, Evan was looking like a holy warrior. But to Olivia, he seemed more of a dark demon than a holy warrior. Evan's face was still emotionless, 
and his deep black eyes were full of coldness. When Olivia looked into those eyes, she once again felt the same bone-chilling coldness she had been feeling earlier. Your title question mark question mark question mark is reacting. Your title question mark question mark question mark is reacting. When Evan looked at Olivia he felt his heart turning even colder. Before leaving the academy, he had planned to kill Olivia as soon as possible to avoid any accidents. But now his plan changed. If he wanted to give her a simple death, he could have attacked her with full force. When she was trying to defend herself from the wind lightning storm, he could easily kill her with the combined attacks of all his shadow undeads at that time. But at the moment he did not want to give her a simple death. What are you doing with these monsters? Olivia surpassed the shock she was feeling and shouted at Evan. Evan didn't bother to answer her and tapped his foot on Albelu's back. Howl dash. Crackle crackle. Just as Evan tapped on Albelu's back, it howled out loud, and all the snakes like lightning arcs moving at the top of the lightning dome, come raining down towards Olivia. Howl exclamation point howl dash. A1 and A2 howled as well. The horns on their forehand lit up, and more lightning arcs went towards Olivia. Olivia's body tensed up when she saw this. But remembering the silver rune that she used, her tense body immediately relaxed. Boom boom. The lightning arcs struck down the barrier which was protecting her. But other than making some cracks on it, they were not able to do anything. I think you should take a look at. And even the cracks that the lightning arcs made were instantly recovered by the silver light that was coming out of the rune. I don't know how did you bring these monsters inside the city or how are you controlling them. But you can't break this barrier. Olivia said with a slight smirk on her face. It won't be long before the other hunters will come here, and then it will be over for you. If it was just Evan, she would have already come out of the barrier and would have attacked on him. But facing one A plus rank lightning wolf along with three other A rank monsters is not easy even for her. So it was obvious she wanted to wait for other hunters to come here first before doing anything. Evan narrowed his eyes when he saw the barrier was still fine, even though it was being attacked by Albelu. A1 and A2. Don't stop your attacks, Evan said to Albelu and others who attacked the barrier with even more furiosity. You are just wasting yo. Olivia was about to mock Evan when the wolves attacked the barrier even more furiously, when she saw Evan suddenly disappear from the back of the A plus rank wolf. Booyom dash. Evan appeared above the barrier and stomped down on it. The cracks created by the lightning arcs enlarge, and the ground around the barrier sank down because of the impact. Olivia was stunned because of Evan's speed, but before she could think anything else, a dark aura burst forth from Evan's body. Break Evan said in a cold voice and stomped down on the barrier for the second time. The silver light coming out of the rune tried to repair the cracks on the barrier, but before it could repair it, shadow energy flooded out from Evan's foot that he used to stomp down on the barrier. Cracked. The barrier was instantly shattered when Evan used shadow energy. Even after destroying the barrier, Evan's foot did not stop and continued to move towards Olivia's face. Olivia never thought that Evan would break the barrier this easily, so she was not prepared for his attack at all. Evan's foot struck Olivia right in her face and sent her flying backwards. There wasn't much power left in his stomp after breaking the barrier. But Olivia's nose and a few teeth were still shattered. She crashed 20 meters away and rolled on the ground like a rag doll. F U asterisk K. Olivia cursed and spit out the blood that filled her mouth after her teeth were broken. She stood up and glared at Evan with hate filled eyes. I will kill you, you bastard. She roared and was about to move towards him when A1 and A2 appeared at her left and right sides. Both of their claws were covered in lightning and they slashed up both of her arms. F U asterisk K off. Olivia shouted, and an energy wave came out of her body that pushed away A1 and A2. Just as she pushed away A1 and A2, she saw Evan flying towards her using his shadow wings. Olivia's eyes turned frosty when she looked at Evan, and without any second thought, she used her most powerful skill on him. A black ball instantly formed in her hand, and she shot it towards Evan. Soul Obliteration Curse, Unique Skill. This curse directly attacks the target's soul, severing its connection to their body. The curse will severely damage the soul of the target. If the soul of the target is not strong enough there is a very high chance of instantaneous death, after getting hit by the curse. Evan saw the black ball coming towards him with lightning speed. Just as he saw the black ball, 
His eyes flash for a moment, and instead of dodging the black ball, he continued to move towards Olivia. Chapter 360 Evan did not dodge the curse, and it successfully hit him. His whole body was engulfed by a black aura when he was hit by the soul obliteration curse. You're dead, you bastard. Olivia laughed, showing her broken teeth when she saw that Evan was not able to dodge her attack. But before she could close her mouth after laughing, the black aura covering Evan disappeared, and he appeared in front of her throwing a punch right at her face. Ha <laughs> ha. Olivia was still laughing when she saw Evan suddenly appear in front of her, and wanted to dodge his attack. But because of using wind manipulation and temporal velocity, Evan was too fast. Before Olivia could even understand how Evan was completely fine, his fist struck her laughing face, shattering her remaining teeth. Catcher exclamation point. Olivia was sent flying with a bloodied mouth and broken jaw. She was about to hit the lightning barrier created by Albello and others, when some lightning chains caught her in midair. Crackle exclamation point. Ugh. Olivia cried out in pain when the lightning penetrated her body through the chains, and struck her internal organs. Suddenly Olivia felt a mountain crushing weight bearing down on her body, and some of her fractured bones snapped. Adam used his gravitational field to full power, trying to crush all of Olivia's bones. Ugh. Blood started to come out from Olivia's eyes, ears and nose. Her whole body was trembling because of lightning, and most of her fractured bones snapped. Evan ignored screaming Olivia, and summoned back A1 and A2 into his shadow storage. He jumped on Aleblu's back and looked at Adam. Adam immediately stopped using his gravitation field and climbed on Aleblu's back as well. When Adam stopped using his gravitational field on Olivia, she was already on the verge of passing out. Let's go, Evan said to Aleblu who howled out loud. The horn on its forehead crackled with lightning, and the barrier covering the mansion disappeared. At the same time, more lightning chains emerged from Albelu's body and bound Olivia's body. Crackled exclamation point. Lighting circled around Aleblu's legs, and it turned into a beam of purple light. That instantly disappeared in the sky. Adam used gravity manipulation to reduce their weight which increased Albelu's speed even more. Evan also used wind manipulation to remove all air resistance from around them. In just a few seconds Albelu moved away tens of kilometers, and created enough distance from the mansion. While Albelu was moving towards the wilderness, Evan looked at the notifications that he received after getting struck by Olivia's curse. The second effect of your title, Ruler of the Shadow Realm, activated. Following are the effects of your title, Ruler of the Shadow Realm. 1. You can now use shadow energy. 2. You are immune to all curses and debuffs that are below the origin level. Even when Evan looked at the new effect of his title, his face remained the same and he didn't feel any emotion. I think you should take a look at. He closed his status window and looked at Olivia, who was screaming in pain because of the lightning chains that were sending powerful lightning inside her body. Three minutes later after Evan left, some powerful auras approached the location of Olivia's mansion. Even though the mansion was covered by the lightning barrier, many people still felt the destructive energy waves of the arrow, and informed the Hunter Association about it. Soon 1A rank and 3B plus rank hunters reached near Olivia's mansion. The A rank hunter was Alan whom Evan saw yesterday in the academy. When Alan and the other three hunters saw the completely destroyed mansion, they were stunned. All of them knew that it was the mansion of Olivia, who is an A plus rank hunter. They could not believe the mansion of an A plus rank hunter was completely destroyed. What the hell happened here? Asked one of the B plus rank hunters when he looked at the crackling lightning and howling wind. That was still enveloping the mansion. Alan was also dumbfounded because he could feel that the lightning arcs covering the mansion were definitely not normal. Sebastian also received the news of what happened. And his mount can't help but twitch when he received the reports. Just how strong is that guy? Sebastian cannot help but mutter when he heard about the situation. Evan was still a B-plus rank hunter in his eyes. So he can't understand how he took care of Olivia, who is an A-plus rank hunter. Olivia's mansion was not far from the southern entrance to the city. Due to its high speed, Albelu did not take long to reach there and exit the city through it. Due to its high speed, the city guards stationed at the entrance of the city could not even see Albelu when it left the city. They just saw a beam of purple light that passed through the gate and instantly disappeared into the sky. After leaving the city, Evan asked Albelu to move deeper into the wilderness. 
Hearing Evan, the lightning around Albelu intensified even more, and like a raging storm, it moved deeper into the wilderness. In a matter of minutes, Albelu was more than a thousand kilometers away from the city. When Evan felt the distance was enough he asked Albelu to stop and release Olivia, who was still screaming because of the lightning. Albelu stopped in mid-air, and the chains that were binding Olivia disappeared. Olivia started to fall down from the sky, but Evan stretched out his hand, and an ice chain came out of it, that wrapped around falling Olivia. After capturing Olivia, Evan used his shadow wings and flew upwards. Olivia's body was still numb because of Albelu's lightning, so she was not able to move when Evan captured her. Evan brought her 200 meters high in the sky, his eyes flashed with cold eyes, and he looked at Adam, who was floating 100 meters below him. After seeing Adam, Evan stopped using the ice chain. When Evan stopped using his ice chain, Olivia started to fall down from the sky. A blue aura burst forth from Evan's body, and he mercilessly stomped down on falling Olivia. Olivia coughed out loud in mid-air, and was sent flying towards the ground like a meteorite. Just as she passed through the area where Adam was floating, he used gravity manipulation, and increased the gravity around the falling Olivia even more. Because of increased gravity, Olivia's falling speed increased more, and like a real meteorite, she crashed on the ground, making a large crater in the process. Chapter 361 Boom Dash as Olivia crashed, a colossal explosion shook the ground. A massive shockwave rippled outward from the point of impact, tearing through the landscape with sheer force. A dust cloud rose high in the sky, and debris flew everywhere. The earth trembled beneath the might of the impact, and trees swayed as if bowing to the person who created the powerful shockwave. A thunderous roar echoed through the wilderness, momentarily silencing the monsters that called this place home. When the dust and debris settled, a jaw-dropping sight awaited. A giant crater that spanned over 100 meters in diameter had been carved into the ground. In the middle of the crater lay Olivia with her broken body. Most of her bones were broken, her internal organs were heavily damaged, and she was bleeding from all over the places. Her aura became extremely weak after she crashed to the ground, and if not for her A-plus rank physique and A-plus rank armor, she would have already died. Evan landed beside Olivia and looked at her unmoving body. She was still conscious, and he could see tears mixed with blood coming out of her eyes. Evan's eyes flashed with coldness, and his shadow flickered a bit. The next second Elijah came out of his shadow and stood beside him. Heal her, Evan said looking at the broken body of Olivia. He had no intention of giving her such a quick death. Elijah's body glowed with light element, and she started healing Olivia. Suddenly Olivia felt a warm feeling spreading all over her body, and the pain she was feeling started to decrease. Olivia was stunned when she felt this, and wanted to know what was happening, but her body was still heavily injured, and she could not even move her head to look around. While Elijah was healing her, Evan took away Olivia's storage ring. He didn't look at what was inside the ring, and just threw it inside his shadow storage. Elijah's healing power increased after she received a boost from the growth link skill, but even then, it took her one hour before she was able to stabilize Olivia's injuries. Just as Olivia felt she could move, her body flashed with black light, and she moved 20 meters away from the place she was a moment ago. As she moved, a black ball formed in her hand, and she threw it towards Evan. Blinding curse. Evan didn't dodge the black ball, and when it came near him, he just slapped it away. Olivia's eyes trembled when she saw this, and she started to use different kinds of curses on Evan. Curse of sleep. Curse of the haunted. Curse of the lost. All the curses successfully hit Evan, but none of them worked on him. What the hell are you? Olivia shouted in a fear-filled voice when she saw not even a single curse worked against him. Evan slapped away another curse and looked at Olivia with the same cold eyes. Damn it, Olivia knew that she can't do anything to Evan, so she turned around to run away from there. I think you should take a look at. But just as she turned around, the gravity around her increased, and she lost balance for a moment. Just as Olivia lost balance, Evan appeared behind her. He grabbed her by the head and smashed her face into the ground. Boom dash. Ugh. Another small crater appeared inside the big crater, and many of Olivia's injuries were reopened. Blood once again flowed out of her injuries, and she cried out in pain. 
But Evan didn't stop there, he lifted her again using her head and smashed her face to the ground once again. Boom dash, boom dash, boom dash. Booming sounds echoed out one after another as Evan continued to smash Olivia's face to the ground. One minute later Olivia's face was completely disfigured, and anyone could barely recognize her. Seeing she was about to pass out, Evan kicked her towards Elysia who once again started to heal her. When she was healed once again, Olivia didn't try to run away this time. Instead, she looked at the black humanoid monster who was floating in the air. Just now when she tried to run away she clearly felt the monster use gravity manipulation to stop her. And there was only one person she knew who could use gravity manipulation. A hey Adam, Olivia said in a trembling voice. Not wanting to believe that the humanoid monster in front of her was Adam. She knew that someone killed Adam yesterday. And people are still looking for the culprit. But the more she looked at the humanoid monster the more she felt it looks a lot like Adam. Suddenly another thing came into her mind and she looked at other monsters as well. Seeing all the monsters Evan was controlling were black in color and had purple flaming eyes, she thought that Evan could somehow control people and monsters. Thinking that he would control her too just like these monsters, she looked at him with even more fearful eyes. I can't fall into the hands of this devil, Olivia thought and took out a storage ring from her breast pocket. Evan can't help but raise an eyebrow when he saw this. He was about to order Arbelu to stop her, thinking she had something like an escape scroll in that storage ring, but stopped when he saw her taking out a strange box from the storage ring. Is this the box Leon delivered her? Evan thought when he saw the box. Olivia threw away the storage ring after taking out the box, and looked at it with uncertainty. But soon a determined expression appeared on her face, and she took out a small bottle filled with red liquid from it. I thought I would use it only after my alchemist confirms that there is no harm in using this. Olivia thought and opened the cork of the bottle. Evan did not stop her and just looked at the red liquid from the distance. I hope those bastards were not lying to me. Olivia muttered inwardly and drank the red liquid. Chapter 362 Olivia drank the whole liquid in a single motion and threw away the bottle. Just as she finished drinking the liquid, her body started to change. Ugh. A scream escaped Olivia's mouth as two black-colored bat-like wings came out of her back. Her skin turned black in color, and a beastly aura started to come out of her body. Her hand turned into long claws, and the nails of her feet became long. Evan raised an eyebrow when he saw this, because he could feel the aura of a monster coming out of her body. Simultaneously, Evan remembered Carlos who also turned into a monster while fighting against Valerie. But unlike Olivia, he did not drink any liquid to transform. In less than 10 seconds Olivia's appearance completely changed, and she was looking like a bat monster instead of a human. All the injuries that she received earlier also healed, and her aura became far more powerful than before. Even though she did not reach S rank, she was far stronger than before. This power, Olivia muttered. But her voice was very strange sounding demoniac instead of a woman's voice. You should have killed me when you had the chance. Now even that A plus lightning wolf can't save you from me Olivia said in a crazed voice and flapped her wings. Wooash dash. Just as she flapped her wings, she turned into a beam of black light and instantly appeared before Adam, who was hovering in mid-air. Before Adam could react, she slashed at him using her claws and cut off one of his hands. Evan raised an eyebrow when he saw this because even though he was using temporal velocity, he found it hard to keep up with Olivia's speed. After reaping one of his hands, she kicked Adam in the chest, sending him down towards the ground. Boom dash. Adam crashed on the ground, and another 30 meters wide crater appeared there. Just as she kicked away Adam, the hand she cut off turned into black smoke and disappeared. Olivia didn't care about the hand that disappeared and looked at Adam with a startled expression, because even after crashing to the ground, he stood up as if nothing had happened. You really turned him into a monster who doesn't even feel pain. Olivia turned around and said to Evan, you will join him soon enough. Evan replied in a cold voice when he heard Olivia. You think you can still beat me? Olivia said and started laughing. You had the perfect chance to kill me before, but now it is impossible for you to kill me. A dark red aura appeared around Olivia, and she charged towards Evan. Crackle exclamation point. 
But before she could reach him, arcs of lightning covered her from all directions, and Albello appeared before her. Don't get in my way, Olivia shouted and screeched out loud like a bird monster. A strange sound wave traveled in all directions as Olivia screeched out, and Albello dropped to the ground from the sky. The sound wave was actually a spiritual attack that directly affected the soul of the target. Evan was also affected by Olivia's screech, but because of his high spiritual power, he just felt a mild headache from her attack. When Albello fell down Olivia ignored it and charged towards Evan once again. I think you should take a look at. Shadow energy churned inside Evan's monarch core, and he used temporal velocity to its full power. Die. Olivia appeared before Evan in an instant and slashed at him using her sharp claws. Evan took a step back and barely dodged her claw. But Olivia didn't stop after that single attack, and continued to slash at him again and again. Because of practicing with Elijah who is basically a close combat master, Evan's reaction speed was quite good. Utilizing his shadow energy and reaction speed, he was somehow able to dodge all of Olivia's attacks. Olivia was furious when she saw how Evan was dodging all of her attacks, but what irritated her the most was the fact that even though he was barely dodging all of her attacks, his facial expressions were still the same like he doesn't care about her attacks at all. You bastard. Olivia growled as the red aura around her intensified. She started to lose control over her emotions, and her beastly nature started to take control over her. As her beastly nature started to take control over her, Olivia completely ignored other things, and started to attack Evan furiously. Her attack power and speed increased at the same time. But even after her attack speed increased, Evan was still able to dodge all of her attacks. Egg. Seeing Evan was still able to dodge her attack, Olivia roared out loud, and her beastly nature completely took over her. Evan's eyes flashed when he saw this because currently, Olivia was full of openings. Suddenly Olivia felt immense pressure on her mind like someone was poking a needle into her brain, and her attacks halted for a moment. Just as she stopped attacking, shadow energy gathered around Evan's fist, and while still using mind suppression, he punched Olivia. Boom dash. A booming sound echoed out, and Olivia slid backwards. Seeing the result of his punch, Evan's expression changed for the first time. His punch only created a white mark over Olivia's skin, and she was completely unharmed. Looks like her defense reached S rank after she drank that liquid Evan. S expressions soon returned to normal, and he thought calmly, I will kill you. Olivia roared like a beast and charged at Evan once again. If Evan wanted, he could have easily used shadow possession to take care of her. But even after seeing her defense, he did not feel any need to use that skill. In his opinion, as long as someone is not an S ranker, he can handle him using his shadow energy. He doesn't need to use shadow possession to deal with other hunters, as long as he has his shadow energy. Evan dodged another attack from Olivia and punched her once again. I think it is the perfect time to use the skill I got after absorbing the remaining cores. Evan thought, and suddenly his eyes turned pitch black. Rumble dash. The sky started to rumble and black clouds covered the sky. Even the monsters who were far from the location where Evan was fighting, looked in the direction of the black clouds, and felt their soul shaking because of fear. Crackle dash. Suddenly pitch black arcs of lightning started to move inside the black clouds like snakes ready to destroy everything. Thunder Tempest Evan said, and the next second hundreds of pitch black lightning arcs descend from the sky, covering a large area of the wilderness. Chapter 363 dot dot. Thunder Tempest unique skill colon, using this skill, you can send your energy into the sky, and summon a giant lightning cloud, that crackles with destructive lightning. The cloud hovers above the user, and its range and power depend on the amount of energy that the user used to summon it. On the command from the user, the cloud of lightning will release powerful bolts of lightning, striking down enemies with devastating precision. Evan had absorbed the rest of his cores before leaving the academy. After absorbing the A-rank core that he found in Lael's storage ring, he got the unique skill of the Orc. He was greatly surprised when he saw that he could obtain monsters' unique skills after absorbing their cores. But after remembering that he also gained the wind manipulation skill after absorbing the core, he thought it was only natural that he could obtain unique skills as well. Evan activated the skill using shadow energy instead of mana, which is why the color of the lightning was black instead of the usual purple. As Evan activated his skill, 
The sky was now shrouded in darkness. A massive black cloud stretches across the sky. As the cloud grew darker and more menacing, flashes of black light pierced through the ebony veil, illuminating the entire expanse in an eerie glow. Thunder roared like an angry beast inside the cloud, shaking the very foundations of the earth. I'll kill you. Olivia didn't care about the black arcs of lightning that flashed across the sky and rushed towards Evan with blood red eyes. She had already lost control of her emotions and her beastly nature had completely taken possession of her. In her current state, she wanted nothing more than to kill Evan. Crackle exclamation point. But before she could get close to him, black lightning crackled and calamity descended from the sky. The range of the Thunder Tempest was very big, and it was covering an area of about 10 kilometers. There were thousands of black lightning arcs coming down from the cloud, and Evan couldn't control all of them. Even though his spiritual power is very high, using shadow energy to activate a unique skill, still put a great burden on his mind. Even though he could not control thousands of lightning arcs, it was no problem for him to control five or six arcs. Just as Olivia moved towards him, five arcs of black lightning came down from the sky like snakes. Olivia, who was moving towards him, finally felt a sense of danger and wanted to back away. But before she could back away, all five arcs of lightning struck her. Ugh. An inhuman scream escaped from Olivia's mouth as the black lightning tore open her armor and struck her body. Dark red blood gushed out, and Olivia was smashed to the ground by the force of the lightning. The wings that came out of her back after drinking red liquid were torn open, and a deep wound appeared on her back. The black lightning tore open her flesh and went inside her body. Olivia's defense reached S rank after she drank that red liquid, but even then the power of black lightning was not something that she could take head on. Screech. Feeling the intense pain brought by the black lightning, Olivia screeched like a monster. I will kill you. Olivia's eyes become crimson red because of the pain, and she tried to stand up. While glaring at Evan, dot I think you should take a look at. Crackle exclamation point. Seeing her maniac look Evan just waved his hand, and two more black lightning arcs struck her. Ugh. She was once again smashed to the ground by the force of the lightning, and the pain brought by it made her cry out in pain. Evan didn't want to use too much lightning on her, as he still had to turn her into a shadow undead. Elysia could heal the normal damage on her body, but he was not sure if she would be able to heal the damage done on her body, due to the shadow energy. Evan once again waved his hand, and this time only one lightning arc came toward Olivia. But this lightning arc struck her at the open wound on her back. Ugh. Olivia screeched out, and her eyes finally regained some clarity because of the pain. The effect of the red liquid started to wear off, and her aura started to decrease. Boom dash. Boom dash. Boom dash. Boom dash. Continues booming sound echoed out throughout the wilderness, as the black lightning arcs brought destruction in the area of 10 kilometers. The electric tendrils strike down with unstoppable force, obliterating everything unfortunate enough to be in their path. The ground itself quaked under the unrelenting assault of lightning strikes. Fishes open up, and the very earth trembled in fear, as if it were no match for the might of the lightning. Five minutes later, the lightning cloud started to disappear, leaving behind a completely obliterated area of more than 10 kilometers. Tendrils of black lightning were still flashing on the destroyed ground, making it an area of lightning. In the middle of the destroyed ground, a liver lay with a pained expression on her face. The effect of the red liquid she drank had already worn off. Her skin color returned to normal, and the beastly aura around her disappeared. But after the effect of the liquid ended, her aura became extremely weak. Currently, her aura was even weaker than a B-rank hunter, and her whole body was filled with deep wounds. Evan rubbed his temples after the black clouds disappeared and felt a little lightheaded. He was completely out of the shadow energy, and he used up most of his spiritual power when he activated the Thunder Tempest skill. After recovering for a bit he looked at Olivia and walked towards her. Now that she doesn't have any energy left, it is the perfect time to end this. Evan thought, and the next second five pitch black nails appeared in his hand. Chapter 364, Stop. Olivia screamed in a fearful voice and was jolted awake, her heart racing, and her breath erratic, as she emerged from the grips of one of the most terrifying nightmares she had ever experienced. Her body was drenched in cold sweat, and she was still trembling. 
This time it took you 10 minutes to break free, huh? Suddenly Olivia heard a cold voice, and her face lost all of its color. The trembling of her body intensified, and she turned around with a despair-filled look. When she turned around, her despair-filled eyes met with the cold black eyes of Evan, who was sitting on the head of Albelu, and was looking at her with the same cold eyes. Let's see how much time you will take this time, Evan said, and five pitch black nails appeared in his hand. Shadow Nails Dash Using the power of the shadow you can create five cursed nails at a time that can immobilize the target's body. When it hits the target's shadow, there is a 3% chance that the target will receive the Nightmare Curse after being immobilized by the Shadow Nail and will fall into a Nightmare Illusion. If the target's soul power is not strong enough he will not be able to leave the Nightmare Illusion and upon losing his life in Illusion, he will lose his life in reality as well. Please know Olivia's heart pounded in her chest when she saw the nails as she pleaded with Evan, her voice trembling and her eyes filled with desperation. Please, stop using your nightmare skill on me. I can't take it anymore. Evan already used more than 100 curse spikes on her, and during this time Nightmare Illusion activated four times. Olivia's body shuddered just thinking about those nightmares. In the first nightmare, she was being burnt alive. In the second nightmare, some monsters were eating her alive by tearing her limbs apart. The other two nightmares were also equally horrifying for her. Even though they were illusions and she successfully broke free from them, she could still feel the sensation of being burnt out alive and other horrifying experiences. She was able to break free from the first nightmare illusion in around one minute. But it was getting harder and harder for her to break free from the nightmare illusions. If she was in her prime condition, she could have broken free from the illusion in a matter of seconds. But after using that red liquid and being beaten down by Evan, she didn't have much power left. Moreover, those nightmares are not normal and were damaging her soul bit by bit. Using nightmare illusions, Evan was slowly tearing apart her soul, giving her the most painful and horrifying death. If you want to kill me, just kill me normally. Quote Olivia implored, her voice cracking. Please stop using your nightmare skill on me. Hearing Olivia, Evan's face bore a cold and detached expression, seemingly unmoved by her distress. He waved his hand and threw five cursed nails towards her shadow. No, Olivia shouted, wanting to move away to dodge the nails. But her body was too weak, and before she could move away the nails hit her shadow. Just as the nails hit her shadow, Olivia's body froze and she wasn't able to move. Her face was filled with terror, and she was looking at Evan with begging eyes. Evan didn't care about Olivia's begging look, and threw five more spikes. When he saw the nightmare illusion didn't activate. When he created new nails. The five nails that he threw earlier disappeared, and Olivia was able to move her body once again. But before she could even take a step back, Evan hit her shadow with five new shadow nails. This time once again Nightmare Illusion didn't activate, but Evan didn't care and made five more nails. This time when he hit her shadow with the nails, a notification appeared before him. Nightmare Curse activated, your target will fall into a Nightmare Illusion. Just as the notification appeared before Evan, Olivia felt her vision darkening, and the next second she found herself inside a dark room. Due to the nightmare's curse, her mind becomes hazy, and she forgets that she is inside an illusion. Inside the dark room, Olivia felt only one thing. Hunger. The hunger she felt was so intense that she thought she would die. I think you should take a look at. Ugh. Olivia grabbed her stomach and dropped to the ground while looking around the room with cloudy eyes. Food. I need food, Olivia said in a hoarse voice. She dragged her body around the dark room, looking for something to eat. But the room was very small and there was nothing inside it. Ugh. Suddenly Olivia felt her hunger intensify, and her desire to eat something increase by a hundredfold. Even though she already searched the entire room, she still looked around wanting to find something to eat. But the room was completely empty, and she found nothing. Grug. Olivia's stomach growled, and her grip around it tightened. When she grabbed her stomach, her eyes landed on her hand. As she looked at her hand, a strange desire flashed in her eyes. Grug. Her stomach growled even more loudly, and hunger started to take control of her mind. Like she was in some kind of trance, she brought her hand close to her mouth. When her hand reached near her mouth, a ferocious expression appeared on her face. 
and she bit off a large piece of the flesh of her hand and ate it. As she bit off her hand, she felt a sharp pain coming from the depth of her soul. But along with the pain, she felt her hunger decrease a little bit. Without caring about the pain, Olivia once again bit off a large chunk of her flesh and devoured it. Evan sat on Albella's back staring at Olivia's unmoving body. After around 20 minutes, suddenly the cursed nails stopping Olivia disappeared. Just as the nails disappeared, Olivia immediately dropped to her knees, her whole body shaking. She lifted her head with difficulty and saw Evan already had five more nails in his hand. Tears welled up in Olivia's eyes and her voice choked with emotion. Please, I'm begging you, just kill me. I can't take it anymore. Evan's face did not change seeing this, and he once again threw five nails towards her shadow. No, Olivia shouted with a horror-filled look, but soon found she can't move once again, because of the cursed nails. Two days later, Olivia was laying on the ground with hollow eyes, her face was stained with dry tears and snot, and there was no expression on her face. Please kill me, please kill me. Like a broken record she kept mumbling while looking at the starry sky. Evan looked at her while still sitting on Albelu's head. Seeing her hollow eyes and lifeless face, he finally pointed one of his fingers at her. A black bullet formed at the tip of his finger, and he shot it towards her, finally wiping away her life force. Chapter 365 As Olivia's life force disappeared, the notifications that were flashing on Evan's status window finally stopped. Just as the notifications stopped, his cold emotions started to return to normal and in less than 5 seconds he was back to normal. When Evan's emotions returned to normal, his face flashed with a silver of confusion. He put his hand to his heart, and felt along with the cold feelings something else also disappeared from his heart. But he didn't know what it was. He looked at Olivia's dead body and then shook his head. He stood up from Albelu's head and walked towards her. Even though he did not know why he acted so coldly in the past two days, he didn't feel any sympathy for Olivia. The image of the hanging bodies of Terry and others flashed in his mind, and he felt nothing. Unlike last time when his emotions went out of control after seeing their dead bodies, this time he didn't feel anything when he thought about them. Evan stopped walking towards Olivia and became even more confused when he didn't feel anything after thinking about Terry and his gang. Your title is reacting. The notification flashed on Evan's status window again, and the confusion on his face disappeared. Well. Why would I feel anything thinking about the death of people who were not related to me? Just as the notification flashed Evan muttered and stopped thinking about Terry and his gang. When he reached in front of Olivia his mouth can't help but twitch. Just what the hell I was thinking. Evan said out loud when he saw the completely destroyed armor of Olivia. I should have removed her armor before beating the SH asterisk T out of her. The armor Olivia was wearing was greatly damaged when he turned her into a meteorite and it was completely destroyed when he used Thunder Tempest on her. Now that his emotions returned to normal he felt like he acted like a complete fool earlier. I better get something good from her storage ring. Or it would be a huge loss this time Evan said, and used Shadow Resurrection. Other than her destroyed armor, Olivia's body was pretty much fine. During the two days, while she was being tortured inside the Nightmare Illusions, Elysia healed most of her wounds. Shadow energy seeped inside Olivia, and her body started to shake. Shadow resurrection failed. The notification flashed before Evan and some cracks appeared on Olivia's body. Evan raised an eyebrow when he saw this and used shadow resurrection once again. This time shadow resurrection didn't fail, and a shadow undead similar looking to Olivia came out of her body. After turning her into shadow undead, Evan ignored Olivia's shadow undead, and looked back at her dead body. Let's see how the skill that was created after merging three skills will work. Evan muttered and stretched out his right hand. Energy devouring. Energy devouring? Unique skill. Ash upon using this skill you can summon devouring thorn vines that can devour life force, stamina or other types of energies from living or dead beings, creatures or objects. The user can use the devoured energy to heal himself, refill his mana, recover stamina, or increase the rank of his core. When he absorbed all the cores that he got from Thornbloom monsters, he received two skills from them. First was the Thorn Vines that was similar to his Ice Chain skill, and second was the Energy Absorption skill that he wanted. The Energy Absorption skill was similar to Energy Devouring, but using that skill, he could not increase the rank of his calls. He could absorb the energy using that skill, 
but that energy could only be used to recover his mana or stamina. He could not even heal himself using that skill dot I think you should take a look at. But he did not care about that because just as he got the energy absorption skill, a notification flashed before him. Devouring energy absorption and thorn vines are compatible with each other right parenthesis. Do you want to merge three skills into one? Yes slash no. He was surprised when he saw he could merge three skills. And after thinking about the results of his previous merged skills, he chose yes without hesitation. And the result was this unique skill. Dark green, eerie looking thorn filled vines came out of Evan's hand when he activated the skill and pierced Olivia's dead body. As the vines pierced her body, Evan saw the devouring vines started to glow dark green and Olivia's body began to decay. Along with her body, the damaged A plus rank armor she was wearing began to rot as well. A large amount of energy went inside the devouring vines and Evan tried to direct it towards his monarch core. From the devouring vine, the energy went inside his body and headed towards his monarch core. When the energy came near his monarch core, it started to rotate and began to refine it. In less than a minute, Olivia's body turned into dust and all the energy that devouring vines absorbed headed towards his monarch core. His monarch core was refining the energy very fast. And in just a few seconds it refined all the energy that was devoured by the vines. Evan checked the progress of his monarch core after it refined the energy and saw the amount of energy it received was comparable to a B plus rank core. It's less than I expected. Evan muttered when he saw the amount of energy that he received. He thought that since Olivia was an A plus rank hunter, he would receive a great amount of energy from her body. Well, there is no shortage of monsters in the wilderness. Now other than cores, I can use bodies of monsters as well to increase my rank. Evan said and stopped thinking about it. Master. Can you give me a name? Suddenly Shadow Olivia spoke looking at Evan with anticipation filled eyes. Evan's mouth cannot help but twitch when he heard her. You already have the name Olivia, isn't that enough? But master I want a new name from you. Shadow Olivia replied in a hopeful voice. Damn, why do all of these people ask for a new name after becoming Shadow Undeads? Can't they behave like Adam who accepted his old name without complaint? I wanted to ask for a new name as well. But you threw me into the shadow storage before I could complain, Adam. S in a voice. Oli, Evan said after thinking for three and a half seconds, from now on your name will be Oli. Thank you Master Oli said in a cheerful voice and bowed her head. Evan just waved his hand after hearing her, acting like he just came up with a great name. I want to sleep. Evan muttered after giving Olivia a new name. It was night time so he looked around and after finding a good place set up a camp there. Protect me. Evan summoned all of his shadow undeads and went inside the camp without worrying about the monsters of the wilderness. He did not sleep for the past two days, so he fall asleep as soon as he lay down. And just after falling asleep Evan found himself in another strange dream. Chapter 366 Thanks for saving me said a woman who had long raven black hair, dark black eyes and a beautiful face with an alluring body. Her black dress was stained in blood, and she was bleeding from all over looking seriously injured. I didn't save you, answered a man who had shoulder length black hair, pitch black eyes and a demonically looking handsome face. These people attacked me as soon as they saw me, so I had no choice but to kill them. The woman was about to say something when she saw a black angle looking humanoid monster with four wings, and purple eyes appeared behind the man and started healing him. In just a few seconds, all the injuries on the man's body were completely healed, and the black angle disappeared into thin air. What was that? The woman asked with her mouth open slightly. The black monster was looking like someone from the wing race, but its appearance was too bad for someone from the wing race. The man ignored the woman's words and looked at the area around him which was littered with blood. In the blood-littered area, bodies of five giant dragons and ten strange mechanical-looking monsters were laying motionless. The dragons were hundreds of meters in size, and their bodies were still bleeding from large wounds. Even though the dragons and the mechanical looking monsters were dead, a fearsome aura was still coming out of their bodies. You will not get away after killing dragons. A woman who had two curved crystal looking horns on her head said, she was laying on the ground and was missing her limbs. Her face would have been quite beautiful if not for her broken teeth and disfigured nose. There was a large hole in her stomach and blood was coming out from it uncontrollably. 
The man did not say anything after hearing the threat from the woman. Black energy covered his arm, taking the form of a sharp blade. Without any emotion on his face, he slashed with his hand, and a sharp scythe-looking black blade sliced the head of the woman, ending her life as well. After killing the dragon woman, the black-haired man looked at the dead bodies of dragons and the mechanical-looking monsters, with a frown on his face. If you are worried about dragons then you can relax. Seeing the frown on his face, the injured black-haired woman said, Once I recover from the poison of that bit asterisk h akosha, I will deal with dragons by myself. You don't need to worry about them. Hearing the woman, the man turned around and looked at her with a face that was literally asking, What kind of b-u-l-l-s-h asterisk it you are spouting? What? The woman asked, feeling strange when the man looked at her. Why would I care about those lizards? The man said and looked back at the dead bodies. I am just thinking what kind of names I should give them. The woman, question mark, question mark, question mark. Question marks appeared above her head, and she looked at him with a confused face. What name? Why do you want to give names to their dead bodies? Is this his way of showing respect for the dead? She had many questions, but she decided to not ask anything. While the man was looking at the bodies, the woman observed him from the side. Suddenly she noticed that his ears were long and sharp, looking like the ears of elves. Is he a half-elf? The woman thought when she saw his sharp ears. All right, I have decided. Suddenly the man said out loud and black energy came out of his body. The eyes of the woman trembled when she saw the black energy and her mouth opened wide. What kind of concept he used to create such a powerful conceptual energy? The woman thought while gulping down her saliva. She had a great affinity with shadow element, so she was easily able to sense the power of the black energy. The dark energy went inside the dead bodies, and the next thing that happened nearly made her faint because of the shock. Suddenly five giant pitch black dragons along with the dragon woman and ten mechanical looking monsters came out of their bodies. After coming out, all of them lowered their head and looked at the man with worshipful eyes. WH what the hell is going on here? The woman took a step back and fall to her but looking at the scene with her eyes wide open. The man did not care about her shock and pointed at the dragon woman who threatened him earlier. I think you should take a look at. You were a crystal dragon before you die from now on your name will be CD43. Crystal dragon no.43. Understood master. ED43 nodded her head after hearing Evan. After the dragon woman, he looked at the five giant dragons. You were a fire dragon so your name will be FD11, you were a wind dragon, so your name will be WD26. Other three dragons also received their names accordingly. After dragons, he looked at the mechanical looking monsters. You ten were from the mechadroid species, so from now on your names will be M15 to M24 from left to right. The woman was completely dumbfounded when she heard the names that the man gave to his black monsters. So after thinking for so long he came up with such lame names. The woman thought feeling speechless. Let's go. After giving the names, the man waved his hand and said to his black monsters. Just as he waved his hand, all the monsters standing in front of him disappeared. And he started to walk away without even looking at the woman. Wait. Seeing him going away the woman quickly stood up and went after him. What? Hearing her, the man turned around and asked with a frown on his face. Can I come with you? The woman asked showing her injuries. No the man said and turned around to leave. The woman became dazed because of the instant rejection and was not able to react for a few seconds. After coming out of her dazed state, she quickly went after the man once again. Wait, she said after coming in front of him. Now what? The man asked in a slightly annoyed tone. I am poisoned, and I need your help to detoxify it, the woman said, showing her skin which was slowly turning blue. Why should I help you? The man asked not caring about her poison. I don't even know you. Why do you think I will waste my time helping you? I can give you high level artifacts for helping me, the woman said taking out a storage ring. I don't use artifacts. The man instantly replied when he saw the storage ring. The woman once again become dazed when she heard him, and was not able to speak anything. Seeing her dazed look, the man sighed. He thought for a moment before asking, can you cook? The woman came out of her dazed state when she heard him and nodded her head. Okay, I can help you, but after that, you have to be my cook for a month, the man said when the woman nodded her head. What? The woman shouted in a shocked voice, 
You want me to become your cook? Do you know who I am? I don't know who you are nor do I care, the man said in a plain voice. But if you need my help, then you will have to accept my condition. Seeing the indifferent look of the man, the woman gritted her teeth. She looked at her hand which was turning blue, then nodded her head with a reluctant expression on her face. All right. The man smiled when he heard her and nodded his head. What is your name? He asked her. Anastasia, the progenitor of the Shadow Dragons. Chapter 367 As the first rays of the morning sun pierced through the tent, Evan slowly stirred awake. As he was in the wilderness, the air was cool and carried the earthy scent of the forest. After the full night's sleep, he was completely refreshed, and the fatigue of the last two days disappeared. What a strange dream, said Evan with a small smile on his face. He didn't know why, but after seeing that dream he was feeling quite good. Progenitor of shadow dragons, huh? Normally he always felt uncomfortable after seeing those strange dreams. But this time he did not feel any kind of discomfort. On the contrary, he wanted to see that dream once again. This dream even solved my problem regarding the names of my shadow undead Evan stood up and stretched his body. Now I don't have to worry about the names of my new shadow undeads. This time Evan didn't even bother to think about the person he had seen in his dream. He already knew that there is something wrong with all these dreams, and they are not normal. But since there is nothing he can do about it at the moment, he just decided to not think too much about it. Raw exclamation point. Suddenly he heard a loud roar and sensed the auras of some monsters. He leisurely walked out of his tent and used his shadow senses. When he used shadow senses, he saw Albello and his other shadow undeads glaring at the small group of orcs. There were 10 orcs in the group, the leader of the orcs was at A rank, and the other 9 ranged from C plus to B plus rank. All the orcs were trapped inside a lightning cage, and were looking at his shadow undeads with horror-filled looks. Last night these orcs smelled the aroma of a delicious human, and came here for a fest. But just as they came here, they were caught by these big bosses. Evan walked towards Albello and others, and soon reached the place where orcs were trapped. Yesterday before going to sleep he asked his shadow undeads to capture some monsters alive if possible, because he wanted to test his energy devouring skill on a living creature. Good job Evan said while patting Albelu's head who purred like a cat. He looked at the group of orcs, and chose a B plus rank orc as his target. Energy devouring. The devouring vines charged towards the B plus rank orc who tried to get away, but suddenly some lightning chains came out from the ground and stopped it from moving away. Roar. Devouring vines pierced through its tough skin, and the orc roared out in pain. The other nine orcs, including the A rank, looked at the B plus rank orc in horror as its body began to wither. Evan also raised an eyebrow when he saw the painful expression on the orc's face, and how its body was withering. Why do I feel like I somehow turned into a demonic cultivator of a Wuxia novel Evan can? T help but think after seeing the eerie scene in front of him. In just one minute, the body of the B-plus rank orc turned into dust. Evan focused on the energy which was inside the devouring vines, and sent it towards his prime core. I think you should take a look at. In refining energy, his prime core was much slower than his monarch core. His prime took about five minutes before it refined all the energy. When Evan checked its progress, he saw the energy he received was even less than a C-plus rank core. What the hell is this? Evan said with a baffled expression on his face, after seeing the amount of energy he received. That orc was a B-plus rank monster, and if I had killed it normally instead of using energy devouring on it, I could have even found a core inside it. Evan was very upset by the amount of energy his prime core received, but suddenly he thought about something and his eyes lit up. I might be wrong, but I will be able to confirm it soon. Evan muttered and looked at the remaining 9 orcs who were shivering. Among 9 orcs, 1 was A rank, 2 were B plus rank, 3 were B rank, and 3 were C plus rank. I will be going to the central city in a few days for the tournament. I still have many slots left in my shadow save. Let's fill all of them before going back to the city. Kill them without damaging their bodies, Evan said to Albelu who howled out loud. The lightning cage which was trapping orcs lit up, and many tendrils of purple lightning came out of it. The tendrils of lightning pierced orcs' bodies and went towards their brains, killing them instantly. After the orcs died, Evan activated Shadow Resurrection, and nine shadow orcs appeared before him. Growth Link Skill activated right parenthesis. 
Since there were many low-level orcs in the group his growth link skill activated. The rank of all the orcs who were below B plus rank skyrocketed. And they reached B plus rank. Meanwhile, B plus rank orcs received a good power boost from the growth link skill. Evan summoned back most of his shadow undeads, leaving behind only Arbelu, A1, A2, Adam and Oli. Let's go for a small hunt Evan said to his A rank shadow undeads, and all of them dashed into the wilderness. Because of their high speed, in less than 2 hours Evan's 50 slots of shadow save were full. Evan was not planning to keep all of these shadow undeads. If he found a good monster in the future, he will just remove one of these shadow undeads, and will save that monster. With my current skills and these shadow undeads, I think I can even clear an A rank dungeon without any problem Evan said, as he put away the body of a monster into his shadow storage. After putting away the body he looked in the direction of the city and flew away from the wilderness. Chapter 368 While going back to the city, Evan checked Olivia's skills, using the second effect of his growth link skill. People who are specialized in curses are very rare, so Evan was curious about her skills. When he saw the details of her soul obliteration skill, he can't help but shudder. If my title's second effect hadn't activated at that moment, I might have died right there Evan thought, and felt even more confused as to why he did. T tried to dodge that attack at that moment. I should keep my emotions in check, while fighting Evan said to himself and looked at her other skills. Olivia had many skills, and Evan found some interesting ones. Curse of the Reaper. The target becomes marked by the Grim Reaper, making them more susceptible to death and critical injuries. Any wounds they receive become harder to heal. If I use this curse on my opponent before fighting, my chances of causing critical injuries will increase Evan said while rubbing his chin. Curse of Betrayal. This curse sows seeds of distrust and betrayal within the target's mind. They start doubting their allies' intentions, leading to conflicts and disruptions within the group. Evan's mouth can't help but twitch when he saw this curse. If used during a group fight, this curse can cause chaos. Evan said out loud thinking about a scene where people will start doubting their own allies, friends or teammates. Curse of the Haunted. The target is plagued by malevolent spirits, causing hallucinations, nightmares, and paranoia. The constant psychological torment makes it difficult for target to maintain focus. There were other curses as well, and after seeing most of them Evan was certain about one thing. Just like her personality, all of Olivia's skills are vicious. Evan stopped looking at her skills and increased his flying speed. Crackle exclamation point. Boom dash. Wind and lightning circled around his shadow wings, and he turned into a beam of light that instantly broke the sound barrier. Evan didn't ask Albelu to bring him back, instead using the second effect of the growth link skill he took its lightning creation skill. Now just like Albelu, he can also create and control the lightning for the next three days. Although he was over a thousand kilometers away, it took him less than an hour to reach the city. He landed some distance away from the city entrance and went there on foot. When Evan reached the entrance of the city, he found that the security at the entrance was very tight. He even saw two A rank hunters standing guard at the entrance. I think you should take a look at. But when he thought about what he had done in the last few days, it seemed natural to him that the security of the city is higher than normal. If I'm not mistaken, the city authorities must have thought that Adam and Olivia were killed by the Dark Guild, so they increased security. Evan thought as he arrived in front of the city entrance. Your hunter card. The security guard standing at the entrance asked him just as he arrived there. Evan handed him his hunter card and asked, why is security higher than usual? The guild master of the Twilight Moon was kidnapped two days ago. The authorities of the city suspected that it is the work of the Dark Guild. So currently the entire city is on high alert. The security guard said while scanning Evan's card. She was an A plus rank hunter, and yet she was kidnapped. How is that possible? Evan showed a shocked expression on the outside after listening to the guard, but inside he was smiling. The world is more dangerous than you think kid, be careful when you go outside of the city next time. After confirming there was no problem with Evan's hunter card, the security guard said to him. He returned his hunter card to him and allowed him to enter the city. Thanks, I will be careful. Evan nodded his head after hearing the guard and went inside the city. As expected, they are thinking it is the work of the Dark Guild Evan thought after coming inside the city. Looks like Sebastian did not tell anyone that I am the one who attacked Olivia. 
Evan used his shadow wings once again and flew towards the academy. This time he did not use lightning while flying, and just used wind manipulation. Now I have to collect information about the Dark Guild from Oli after going back. Evan thought remembering that he had told Sebastian that he would collect all the information from her. I'll also have to come up with a good excuse to tell Sebastian where I've been for the past two days. According to his deal with Sebastian, he had to give him all the collected information yesterday. But because he was busy torturing Olivia, he completely forget about it. Soon Evan landed before the academy and went inside. He returned to his room and first took a long bath. After taking a bath and changing his clothes, he cooked a meal for himself. While cooking the meal he was also checking the skills of all the shadow undeads that he just created. Some of the shadow undeads received new skills after their rank was increased because of the growth link skill. But all of these skills are normal. No one received a unique skill like Eclipse. Evan muttered when he checked the skills of his new shadow undeads. Soon the meal was cooked and Evan started to eat. Even while eating he was checking the skills of the remaining shadow undeads. Now he was checking the skills of monsters who were B plus rank when he killed them, and they received a power boost after becoming shadow undeads. Till now all the monsters who were at B plus rank just received a power boost. They did not receive any new skill because of the growth link skill. When Evan had checked almost all of his shadow undeads and was about to stop, he finally saw something good in the skill panel of one of his B plus ranked shadow undead. Chapter 369 Astronax Evan muttered in a surprised voice when he saw the shadow undead whose skill caught his eyes. Astronax was the shadow undead of the Minotaur whom he killed in the Monster Paradise dungeon. I did not expect it to receive such a good life-saving skill, because of growth link skill Evan said, when he read the details of its new skill. Titanic Resilience, unique skill. When activated, you gain temporary invulnerability to all incoming damage, allowing you to easily ignore all attacks. However, you cannot attack or use other skills during this state. The invulnerability status will last for 10 seconds, and can only be used once every 3 hours. Using this skill, Astronax can withstand even an S-Ranker's attack. Without taking any damage muttered Evan, a little shocked because of the absurdity of this skill. He took a deep breath and stopped looking at the skill details. I thought B-plus rank Shadow Undeads would only get an increase in power due to the Growth Link skill. But seeing Astronax gain a unique skill makes me think that the chances of gaining a new skill depend on luck Evan said to himself while deep in thought. Soon his meal was cooked and after eating he left the academy once again. He wanted to ask Oli about the Dark Guild, but he did not want to summon her inside the academy because of Nathan. He could use shadow senses to ask all the questions, but he prefers face-to-face -face talk. Soon he reached one of the nearby hotels and booked a room there. After coming into the hotel room he sat down on the bed and summoned Oli. Master. Oli bowed her after seeing Evan. Evan nodded his head and directly started asking her questions about the Dark Guild. His first question was pretty simple. How did she come into contact with the Dark Guild? According to Oli, a few months ago she received a letter containing a communication crystal. It was written in the letter that if she wants to reach S rank, call the saved number inside the communication crystal. She tried to look for the person who sent the letter but wasn't able to find anything. After thinking about it for some time, she burned the letter and put away the crystal into her storage ring. Normally she would have destroyed the crystal as well, but after reaching A plus rank, she realized that her core had reached its limit, and she would not be able to reach S rank. For the next 5 months after receiving the communication crystal, she tried many potions and other expensive medicines to see if she could increase the limit of her core. But even after trying everything, she wasn't able to do anything. In the end, she finally decided to use the communication crystal she received along with the letter. And the person who answered your call turned out he'd be someone from the Dark Guild, right? Evan said while tossing a potato chip into his mouth. Yes, Oli nodded her head. They said they would send me a potion that would help me reach S rank. And I would have to help them once I reach S rank. What kind of help did they want from you? Evan asked, raising an eyebrow. They said they would tell me once I reach S rank, Oli said while shaking her head. I think you should take a look at. Evan tossed a few more chips into his mouth and then asked, What about the potion that they send you? Was it the same potion you used before you died? 
Yes, Oli nodded her head, sounding a little embarrassed. Ha ha ha. Evan burst into laughter when Oli nodded her head, so you were fooled by them. Seeing what happened to Olivia after drinking that potion, it was obvious that it was not something that can help people reach S rank. I think they used me as a test dummy to see the effect of that potion on A plus rank hunters, Oli said seeing Evan laughing. They had no intention of helping me. They just wanted to see the effect of that portion on an A-plus rank hunter. Evan stopped laughing and nodded his head. He also thought the same thing. I wanted to tell that BIT asterisk H she was fooled and wanted to see her face. Too bad she is already dead. Evan said in a regretful voice and tossed another chip into his mouth. By the way Evan looked at Oli. Are you feeling angry that you were fooled? He wondered if his shadow undeads would feel angry because of what happened to them when they were alive. Why would I feel angry? It was not me who was fooled by them. It was B.I. asterisk C.H. Olivia who was fooled by them. Oli immediately answered, severing all of her connections with Olivia. Although Evan had many things to say after hearing her shameless answer, he decided to just keep his mouth shut. Who was the person who answered your call when you used that communication crystal? It was a woman named Sarah Oli said with certainty. Oh, a cold light flashed in Evan's eyes when he heard Sarah's name. Do you know anything about her? I have only talked to her a few times so I don't know much about her, Oli said while shaking her head. From what she told me she is an S-rank hunter, and from the way she talks, I think she is an alchemist. An alchemist her Evan mused, thinking that an S-rank alchemist will soon join his shadow army. Master, a few days ago when I called her, I accidentally heard her talking to someone. Oli suddenly said attracting Evan's attention. What did you hear? Evan asked in anticipation, thinking he is finally going to get some useful information. When I called her a few days ago I heard her talking to someone. She was talking something about Inferno Dungeon and killing someone. Inferno Dungeon. Evan raised an eyebrow when he heard the name of the dungeon. Chapter 370. Inferno Dungeon. Evan raised an eyebrow and signaled Oli to continue. When I called her a few days ago, I overheard her talking to someone Oli continued. She was saying that a member of the Hunters Association's special unit found out about the Inferno Dungeon. That person was killed by someone named Elijah, and they made fake wounds on his body, and blamed his death on a monster. Oli stopped after saying this indicating she doesn't know anything else. Evan thought over what Oli had just said and suddenly remembered what Illusia told him about fetid miasma. According to Illusia the recipe to create fetid miasma came from a ruin. Could it be that ruin is located inside this inferno dungeon? Evan muttered while arching his eyebrows. The potion that they sent to Olivia was also very strange. If I am not wrong, they must be getting all of these potions from this inferno dungeon. Do you know what this special unit of Hunter Association is? Evan asked Oli after a moment. I've heard of them, Oli nodded. If I'm not mistaken they are the most powerful unit of the Hunter Association. Only Hunters of B plus rank or above can join it. Evan was surprised when he heard her. Not many people can reach to B plus rank in Aurora World. Most people stop progressing after reaching to C rank. So a special unit that you can only join after reaching to B plus rank is completely unexpected for him. Well, since it is a special unit, it will make things much easier for me, Evan said and smiled. From what Oli just said, he can conclude that a person from the special unit was killed by the Dark Guild. And since he was a member of the special unit, it would not be difficult to find out where he died. Of course, he doesn't have the power to investigate where that person died. But he knew someone who can investigate the matter. Once Sebastian finds out where this person died, we just have to look around in that area to find this inferno dungeon. Evan smiled coldly and took out his phone. He called Sebastian, who didn't take long to pick up his call. You are still alive. Evan heard Sebastian's surprised voice as soon as he answered his call. Did you think I was killed by her? Evan asked in a plain voice. You were missing for the past two days, so I thought you died fighting against her. Sebastian said in a clearly annoyed tone. He had been waiting for his call since yesterday, but he called him just now. She was a tough nut to crack. I had to work extra hard on her to extract the information, which is why it took me so long to call you. Evan said not minding Sebastian's annoyed tone. You were torturing her for the past two days? Sebastian asked in a dumbfounded voice, feeling speechless. 
You were the one who asked me to get all the information from her. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have had to torture her for two days. Evan said in a serious voice, sounding like he tortured her for two days because of Sebastian. Sebastian was silent for a moment after hearing him. He did not know how he should feel after hearing that Evan tortured someone for two days because of him. But he soon shook his head and asked the question that mattered to him. I think you should take a look at. Did you get any useful information from her? I did get something useful from her. Evan said and told him about everything why Olivia worked for Dark Guild and how she was fooled. He also told him about the Inferno Dungeon and the death of the person from the special unit. So there is a chance that this Inferno Dungeon is the place from where they got all those strange potions Sebastian said after hearing him. Yes, Evan said even though it is just a guess the chances are pretty high. Sebastian was silent for a moment after some time he said something that was bothering him. You said they got the recipe of fetid miasma from a ruin. You should know that once you clear the ruins, they will disappear from the dungeon. But since they are trying to hide that dungeon, can it happen that the ruins of that dungeon can be used again and again? Evan was confused for a moment when he heard Sebastian. But after a moment he finally realized what he is trying to say. Are you saying they can clear the ruins of that dungeon again and again? Just like how people clear normal dungeons. And each time they clear the ruins, they get a reward similar to the recipe of fetid miasma or other things. That's the only reason I can think of that would make them do their best to hide that dungeon from other people. Sebastian said in a serious voice. The rewards of clearing ruins are far more precious than the reward of clearing a dungeon. So it was not surprising that Sebastian was so serious about this matter. Evan also can't help but think about his mana affinity fruit that he got after clearing the ruins of Verdant Wild's dungeon. If I can get rewards similar to mana affinity fruits again and again. Just thinking about this possibility made Evan drool in excitement. Oi, you must bring me along when you find the location of that inferno. Dungeon Evan said to Sebastian, and from his voice, it was clear that he is not going to accept no for an answer. Sebastian's mouth can't help but twitch when he heard Evan's greed-filled voice. We will talk about it after finding the location of the dungeon, Sebastian said while rubbing his temples. Hurry up and start looking for its location. We can't let the Duck Guild enjoy all the benefits alone, Evan said and ended the call. Rewards similar to Mana Affinity Fruit. Evan muttered after ending the call feeling excited. Suddenly he remembered the inheritance that Olivia left for him. He looked into his shadow storage and took out her storage ring. Let's see if there is something useful in it. Chapter 371 It will be awesome if I can get something like the silver rune that Olivia used Evan said, and link the storage ring with himself using a drop of his blood. He looked inside the storage ring, and the first thing he saw was a pair of black color boots, that were giving powerful mana fluctuations. Evan took out the boots and looked at their details. Boots of the Voyager are A plus rank. These boots bestow the user with increased agility and reflexes, allowing them to change direction rapidly and perform complex acrobatics while moving swiftly. While wearing the boots, the user can use the skill Step of Voyager. Step of Voyager. When the wearer activates this skill, they gain the ability to step into the void and traverse vast distances in mere seconds, teleporting from one point to another. The maximum distance you can travel using this skill is 100 kilometers, and this skill can be used two times a day. Perfect Evan said with a smile on his face. He was still using normal boots, so this thing was perfect for him. Moreover, the skill of the boots was quite good, which can help him escape from a dangerous situation. Evan immediately wore the boots and felt his agility and reflexes increase quite a bit. He nodded his head in satisfaction and looked at other things. Other than boots, there were some low-level artifacts ranging from D to B plus rank. But most of them were useless for him because of their low rank, so he decided to give those artifacts to his shadow undeads. After those artifacts, Evan saw some papers with strange runes engraved on them. Evan's eyes lit up when he saw those runes, and he quickly took out those papers. What kind of papers are these? Evan muttered after taking out around 10 papers with different kinds of runes engraved on them. He touched a white paper which was at the top and its details appeared before him. Charm of Illusion. This charm grants the user the ability to create realistic illusions that can deceive enemies or hide the user's true intentions. Oh, 
So these papers are the so-called charms. Evan had read about charms. From what he knows charms are one-time use artifacts that Array Masters create. They engrave special runes on paper that people can activate using their mana. If I am not wrong, even a normal charm that increases your agility for a limited time costs around 3 or 4 million. Credits Evan said, looking at 10 charms in his hand. He doesn't even know how much a charm that can create illusion costs. But he did not think too much about it, and looked at the details of other charms as well. Charm of Reflection. When activated, this charm allows the user to deflect any incoming attacks back at the attacker, turning their own force against them. There were two charms of reflection among those ten papers. Charm of Invisibility. When invoked, this charm renders the user completely invisible, making it easier for them to sneak past enemies or execute surprise attacks. There was one charm of invisibility which was useless for him because he has shadow walk skill. Charm of Quantum Distortion. When activated, this charm lets the user briefly manipulate quantum reality, allowing them to phase through objects or teleport short distances. I think you should take a look at. There were two charms of quantum distortion. Charm of Ethereal Shield. This charm creates a powerful, translucent shield around the user capable of deflecting incoming attacks and providing a temporary barrier against harm. There was one charm for defense. Charm of Elemental Fury. When invoked, this charm imbues the user's weapon or fists with the raw power of the elements, enhancing their attacks with elemental energy for devastating blows. There were two charms of Elemental Fury. Charm of Sealed Essence. This charm locks away a target's mana and skills, preventing them from accessing their full potential until the charm is broken. Evan was surprised when he saw the details of the last charm. This charm can make a hunter completely useless, thought Evan. But he knew if a hunter has enough power he can easily break this kind of charm. I can use these charms as my trump cards, especially the charm of elemental fury that can increase my attack power Evan said, and put away the charms into his shadow storage. After putting away the charms, he looked inside the storage ring again. Just like usual, he found many useless things in the storage ring. There were clothes, useless documents and many other things. Evan ignored them and looked at other things. Soon he noticed a pile of cores in one of the corners, and his eyes lit up. There were many cores, and most of them were A or B plus rank. He even found two A plus rank cores. With these two A plus rank cores, now he had a total of four A plus rank cores. One core came from the bear that he killed in the wilderness after reaching C rank, and one came from Albelu. Evan put away all the cores into his shadow storage, and decided to absorb them later. After putting away the cores he looked inside the storage ring once again. This time he saw a black colored staff that was releasing a sinister aura. Cursed Bane Staff, A plus rank. A staff made from the wood of the ghost tree. The staff can amplify the potency of curse-based magic, making curses cast with it more potent and challenging to dispel. The curses cast through this staff have a longer lasting effect and are more resistant to counter spells. The staff possesses the power to summon cursed entities or beings bound to the darkest energies. These entities serve as loyal guardians, defending the wielder and intensifying the effects of their curses. Evan looked at the details of the staff and threw it towards Oli. This staff was completely useless to him, but Oli has many curse-related skills, so this staff was perfect for her. After giving away the staff when Evan looked inside the storage ring again there was nothing left other than two communication crystals. Seeing the communication crystals his eyes flashed and he took them out immediately. Chapter 372 Evan took out two communication crystals from Olivia's storage ring. Which one is from the Dark Guild? He asked Oli, showing both of the communication crystals to her. This one. Oli pointed at one of the crystals. Should I call her? Thought Evan, looking at the crystal. Well, why not? Evan soon realized he is not going to lose anything, even if he call her. On the contrary, he might be able to get some useful information from her. But before calling her, Evan muttered and summoned Adam and Eclipse. You said some of your things are inside your guild building, but most of the things are at your home, right? Evan asked Adam who nodded his head. Go with Eclipse and bring everything that you left at your home. Okay, Master. Adam and Eclipse bowed their heads and disappeared from the room. After Eclipse and Adam left, Evan threw the communication crystal toward Oli. Call her. Oli caught the crystal and called Sarah. No one answered the call. 
Evan raised an eyebrow and asked her to call again. No one picked up the call again for the first few seconds. Just when Evan was thinking Sarah is not going to pick up the call, she finally answered. Olivia. Evan heard an uncertain voice from the other end of the crystal. Just like others, she must be thinking Olivia is already dead. Thought Evan when he heard her uncertain voice. Go ahead, act like how real Olivia would have acted after finding out she was fooled. He said to Oli who nodded her head. Yeah, Olivia, did you think I was dead? Oli said in a voice full of anger. Of course not. Why would I think you were dead, especially when you had the potion that can make you an S-ranker instantly? Sarah immediately said after confirming it was indeed Olivia who called her. Heh <laughs> Oli laughed in a creepy manner, giving Evan a chilling feeling. A potion that can make me an S-ranker. Did you use the potion? Sarah asked when she heard Olivia's creepy laughter. What do you think? Sarah went silent after hearing Olivia. After a few seconds she asked, what was the result? Why don't you tell me where you are now? I will come and show you the result of that potion face to face. Oli said coldly. Evan was also listening closely, hoping that Sarah will give some useful information. So that potion didn't work, huh? Evan heard Sarah's mumbling from the other end of the crystal. Were you lying to me all this time? Oli asked when she heard Sarah's mumbling. Are you an idiot? PFTT. Evan almost laughed out loud when he noticed how Sarah's tone completely changed upon learning the result of the potion. Damn, I really want to know what kind of expressions Olivia would have made after hearing her. Evan thought, feeling he should have kept Olivia alive for a little longer. If you really want to hear it from my mouth then yes. I fooled you. What are you going to do about it? Sarah said, and from her voice, she sounded a little irritated. She seemed upset because of the failure of her potion. I will kill you bit asterisk h Oli said while gritting her teeth. She was really acting like the real Olivia who was fooled by Sarah. Ha ha ha. Kill me, Sarah said in a mocking tone. You don't even know where I am. Or how I look. How are you going to kill me? I think you should take a look at. At this moment Evan signaled Oli to give the crystal to him. Oli handed the crystal to him without asking anything. What? Not going to say anything now. Sarah asked when Olivia didn't speak anything. Evan smirked when he heard her and opened his mouth. Yo. E-I-T asterisk H. Say hello to your future master. Sarah was taken aback when she heard Evan's voice instead of Olivia's. Who is he? She thought, wondering why Olivia gave the communication crystal to someone else. Who are you? Sarah asked in a confused voice. Are you deaf? I just told you I am your future master. Black lines appeared on Sarah's forehead when she heard Evan, and she tried her best to remain calm. She took a deep breath and after analyzing the situation she said, Let me guess, you are the one who attacked Olivia. As expected from an alchemist. Your mind is quite sharp, Evan said in a praising tone. You are the one who asked Olivia to call me, right? What do you want from me? Sarah asked while thinking deeply. This guy must be an S-ranker since he defeated Olivia, even though she used that potion. You are right, I asked her to call you. As for the reason, it's very simple, Evan said with a smile on his face. I have a deal for you. Sarah raised an eyebrow when she heard Evan. What kind of deal? She asked in a slightly interested voice. I know you are trying to capture people like Valerie and others who possess unique physiques. If you want, I can help you in capturing them. Evan said and waited for her response. Sarah did not speak anything for some time after hearing him. Evan also did not rush her and waited patiently. How do you know about this? After a few moments, Sarah asked him in a cold voice. Illusia told me. Evan thought inwardly. You don't need to know who told me about this. Just tell me if you are interested. Sarah went silent once again before she said. I don't need your help. I already have my arrangements regarding those people. Evan was surprised when Sarah rejected him. From what Illusia told him. He knew she desperately want to capture people like him or Valerie. So he could not understand why she rejected him instantly. Even if she doesn't want my help, she should have at least asked me how am I going to help her capture them. Evan thought and suddenly a possibility came into his mind. The All Academy Tournament will be held soon. Most of the young people who possess unique physiques will come there to participate. Is she going to do something there? Evan thought and his eyes turned sharp. Are you sure? I can hear. Evan wanted to get some information from her. 
But before he could say anything else some notifications started to flash on his status window. Your shadow undead. Volta. Used the conceptual energy of death. Your shadow energy is resonating with the conceptual energy of death. Do you want to use the growth link skill to amplify the death energy of your shadow undead Volta? Yes slash no. Evan. Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? What the f u asterisk k is going on? Chapter 373. Volta came out of a small pond which was filled with shadow energy. The shadow energy was churning inside the pond, and compared to the power of Evan's current shadow energy, the energy waves emanating from the pond were hundreds of times more powerful. It took longer than I expected, said Volta, looking at the black pond, the power of the shadow energy inside the pond is way lower than I imagined. At this rate, in just a few years the shadow energy pond will lose its effect, Volta muttered, and started to walk away from the pond. I wonder when will Master come back? Soon Volta came out of the black castle and saw Anastasia sitting at the top of it. Looking at Anastasia, he remembered her smile when she had woken him up and his hair stood up to no end even though there was not a single hair on his body. Anastasia looked down from the castle, and seeing how Volta was looking at her, her eyes turned frosty. She came down from the top of the castle and analyzed his body. The power of Shadow Energy Pond decreased. Yeah, it is way lower than before. Volta nodded his head. Anastasia just sighed inwardly and waved her hand, a screen showing the entrance of the Shadow Realm appeared before them. Many different kinds of demons were attacking the entrance of the Shadow Realm. There were night demons, fire demons, blood demons and many more. Most of these demons are no match for you, Anastasia said, but their leader is not weak. Anastasia showed Malfacer who was standing at the back of the demons. Someone from Corvallis race. Volta raised an eyebrow when he saw Malfacer. As a demon himself, he knew Corvallis is one of the weakest races among demons. I was also surprised when I saw him. You don't have to worry about other demons, since they are practically very weak to pose any threat to you. But be careful of him, Anastasia said looking at Malfacer. Just like you, he is also on a disaster level. Do you think I will lose to him? Volta asked in an amused voice. I wish he will completely destroy you, so that you won't be able to act cheeky with Master when he will come, back Anastasia said in a flat tone. Now that's the wicked woman I know, Volta said while nodding his head in satisfaction, don't try to act like a gentle person in front of me again, I would have died because of creepiness last time, if not for the fact that I am already dead, why don't I kill you for real, chill chill, I will show you something interesting, later Volta said with a smug expression on his round face, what interesting, asked Anastasia, feeling strange looking at the smug smile on Volta's face. Didn't you always say that I was wasting Master's time by asking those questions? Volta said and looked at the entrance of the Shadow Realm. I will show you today that I was not wasting his time. Anastasia was confused what he was talking about. But she did not say anything. Are you ready? She asked him. I think you should take a look at. Just open the portal and let me out. It's been a long time since I last enjoyed a slaughter fest. Volta said with a wide grin on his round face. The cracks on his black body started to expand, and steam started to come out of them. If someone looks closely, they will be able to see red lava flowing inside the cracks on his body. Anastasia also smirked and waved her hand, materializing a black portal in front of Volta. It will be a good show. Anastasia thought and looked at Volta. Volta's body was already covered in cracks, and deep orange lava was flowing inside them. Seeing the portal, Volta stepped forward and put his hand inside it. The energy inside his body churned, and a cold light flashed in his purple eyes. Molten annihilation, he said, and a disaster descend outside on demons. Malfacer was standing some distance away from the entrance of the Shadow Realm, closely monitoring it. There was a small frown on his crow-like face, and he was scanning his surroundings using his powerful senses. Why do I feel like someone is watching me for the past few days? Malfacer thought, increasing the range of his scanning area. With his power, he easily scanned the area of thousands of kilometers, but even then he wasn't able to find anything strange. Am I thinking too much? Lord, there is something wrong with the portal. While Malfacer was thinking, a fire demon shouted. Hearing something was wrong with the portal, he stopped thinking about everything, and quickly looked there. Is the seal of the Shadow Realm finally broken? Malfacer thought when he saw some ripples forming on the portal. 
But that thought immediately vanished from his mind when he saw the world essence around the portal started to shake. What is happening? Malfacer muttered and was about to go toward the portal, when a black hand which was filled with lava cracks came out of it. His instincts started roaring, and he immediately flew up while screaming, Run away! When the other demons saw the black hand, they too were stunned and wanted to run away. But before they could, the black hand glowed with an ominous red light. Just as the hand glowed with red light, a river of molten lava engulfed the landscape, swallowing every demon who was present within the vicinity. All the demons who could easily destroy the entire Aurora world turned to ashes and disappeared from the world. Even after all the demons turned to ashes, molten lava continued to surge forth from the outstretched black hand, cascading like a fiery river, consuming everything in its path. The ground trembled as the powerful skill ripped through hundreds of kilometers of lush forest reducing ancient trees to mere ashes. Mountains shook as the scorching heat melted their majestic peaks. Around one minute later, the black hand that came out of the portal once again returned to the portal. But now the previously beautiful area that was full of forests and mountains has turned into an infernal land, and no demon other than Malfacer remained alive. Chapter 374 Why? From the sky, Malfacer looked around him with an ugly expression on his face. The once picturesque landscape was now a scene of devastation and desolation, with only smoldering remnants of what once flourished. The entire forest which was around the Shadow Realm disappeared. The mountains within hundreds of kilometers of the area started to melt. They succumbed to scorching heat, and transformed into rivers of molten lava, cascading down from their slopes, and devouring everything in their path. The air was thick with ash and smoke casting a somber glow over the land. The acrid smell of burnt wood and sulfur lingered, a bitter reminder of the cataclysmic event that had just unfolded. All the demons who were attacking the portal of the Shadow Realm disappeared. Malfacer couldn't even see their ashes as everything was devoured by the molten ground. Rumble exclamation point. The aura of disaster class leaked out of his body as the world essence around him started to shake. The ash-filled air was blown away by his powerful aura, and his deep red eyes gleamed with ominous light. I need to inform Master about this. Malfacer took out a black-colored crystal and sent a message to Baphomet informing him about everything. The teleportation matrix was destroyed because of that earlier attack. It would take them at least two hours to come here. Malfacer thought after informing Baphomet everything. Rumble exclamation point. Suddenly the world essence started to shake even more, and another aura of disaster class covered the surroundings. Malfacer looked coldly at the portal of the Shadow Realm, as a three meter tall black lava demon came out of it. Malfacer was taken aback when he saw Volta, and his eyes flashed with a silver of confusion. Didn't Master say that Anastasia, the progenitor of the Shadow Dragons, is the only one inside the Shadow Realm? Malfacer thought in confusion when he saw Volta coming out of the portal. Since he was a demon himself, he easily recognized Volta as a lava demon, which left him even more confused, as he had never seen a black lava demon. Moreover, he can easily feel it. This lava demon is strong. Malfacer had seen many lava demons throughout his life, but he can easily say that the one in front of him is the strongest lava demon he had ever seen. Coming out of the portal, Volta was unsatisfied with the destruction caused by his casual attack. Sure enough, I've become rusty because of not fighting for so long, Volta said, looking at the hundreds of kilometers of area around him which was completely devastated. He looked up in the sky and noticed Malfacer staring at him, feeling Malfacer's cold gaze. The purple flames in his eyes burned brighter, and a wide grin appeared on his face. It would be fun to fight against him, said Volta, and pressed his feet to the molten ground. Whoosh dash. He jumped up and immediately appeared high in the sky some distance away from Malfacer. Who are you? Malfacer asked in an icy tone as a dark aura started to come out of his body. Ah. Volta was shocked when Malfacer did not recognize him. You don't know me. I think you should take a look at. Malfacer felt strange when he saw the shocked look on Volta's face. Could it be? Suddenly a possibility came into Malfacer's mind and his gaze become even more strange. Are you perhaps Anastasia, the progenitor of the Shadow Dragons? Even though the chances were close to none, he still asked when he saw how shocked Volta was when he did not recognize him. Volta, Anastasia who was watching everything from the Shadow Realm. You asterisk K, you. How dare this bastard compare me to that ugly monster? 
Anastasia raged as her aura spread inside the Shadow Realm, scaring the other monsters. Rip him apart, Volta. Volta looked at Malfasa with his purple eyes wide open. The temperature in the surroundings started to increase, and a dangerous aura started to come out of his body. You, how could you mistake me for Anastasia? He asked in a trembling voice. Do I look like a wicked woman? Malfasa? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? Anastasia? You asterisk KU2. I would have ripped them apart if I could leave the Shadow Realm, Anastasia said, while gritting her teeth. Malfasa did not know what Volta meant by a wicked woman, but he could tell that his guess was wrong. Since you are a demon, you must have heard the name. Zolta. Comma right. Volta asked when Malfasa did not recognize him. He was feeling offended that this crow did not recognize him. Zolta. Malfasa frowned, feeling he heard this name before. Suddenly his red crow-like eyes opened wide, and he looked at the black lava demon in shock. How is this possible? Did not you die a few thousand years ago? So people still know about me. He. Voltia laughed like a kid and nodded his head in satisfaction when Malfasa recognized him. How are you still alive? Malfasa did not doubt Volta because of his powerful aura. He could not think of any other lava demon besides Voltia who could be so powerful. Kid, you are knocking at the entrance of the Shadow Realm. Don't tell me you don't know anything about the Shadow Realm and its master. Volta said in a sarcastic voice seeing the stunned expressions of Malfasa. When Malfasa heard Volta, the stories he had heard about the Shadow Monarch finally appeared in his mind. You mean you are? He asked looking at Volta with even more shocked filed eyes. Yes, Zolta is already dead, and I am Voltia, the loyal servant of my master who came out to teach you a lesson for trying to break the seal on the Shadow Realm. How is this possible? How are you still fine when the Shadow Monarch is already dead? You should have disappeared from this world the moment he died. Malfasa muttered trying his best to remain calm. Since you are completely fine does it mean Shadow Monarch is also? Malfasa did not dare to finish his sentence. But he already knew his guess is right. I will have to inform the master about it immediately. Malfasa thought and was about to take out the crystal he used earlier. When the temperature in the surroundings skyrocketed. Talk time is over kid, Volta said, as a red aura started to come out of his body. Let me see how strong the disaster class demon of this era is. Chapter 375 After knowing the real identity of Volta, Malfasa did not want to fight against him. Lava demons are more powerful than other demon species. And even among lava demons, Volta can be considered an anomaly. From what Malfasa know, just like other lava demons, Volta used to be a slave. But he never gave up on his freedom, and after killing the demons who enslaved him, he escaped from the Gehenna Empire. And when he returned to the Gehenna Empire after a few hundred years, he was powerful enough to challenge the top-ranking demons of the continent. Just when Malfasa was thinking of informing Baphomet about Volta and escaping, he noticed that the temperature around him started to increase. He immediately looked at Volta and saw a silver-colored flame dancing on his palm. The space around the silver flame was wrapping and twisting like it was being affected by the flames. Volta waved his hand, and the silver flame spread across space like a thin veil, immediately enveloping the two of them. Just as the silver veil enveloped them, the space inside it distorted, and a separate dimension which was thousands of kilometers big, was created inside the veil. Malfasa's eyes trembled when he saw Volta's creating a separate dimension using his flames. Surprise Volta smirked when he saw the shocked look of Malfasa. You see, inside the Shadow Realm, there is someone who is quite good when it comes to the concept of space. I spent a long time with him learning about the conceptual energy of space. Volta said and showed the silver flames again. Even though I was not able to master the conceptual energy of space, I still learned how to imbue space energy inside my flames to create a separate dimension. The silver flame on his palm disappeared, and deep orange flames started to cover his body. You can't leave this dimension, nor you can contact anyone before you destroy me. Battle intense surged out of Volta's body. So you better try your best if you want to go out alive. Hearing Volta, Malfasa took out the crystal that he used earlier to contact Baphomet and found Volta was right. He can't use the crystal inside this dimension. He looked at the large space around him and felt Volta's battle intent. He closed his eyes for a moment, and when he opened them again, black tendrils like snakes moved inside them. Since I can't escape nor can I contact Master, I might as well fight against him to best of my abilities. 
Darkness started to engulf Malface's body as he completely unleashed his aura. The area of hundreds of kilometers behind him darkened and turned into an abyss. Volta smiled when he saw Malfacer was not thinking about escaping anymore. He also stopped holding back, and deep orange flames burst forth from the cracks of his body. The area of hundreds of kilometers behind him turned into fiery hell. The temperature was so high that even the very fabric of space trembled because of the heat. Don't disappoint me. Volta stretched out his hand, and torrents of flames erupted from his fingertips, forming five swirling infernos that danced in the air. With a swift motion, he directed the fiery infernos towards Malfacer. Seeing five infernos, dark tendrils moved inside Malfacer's red eyes, and the black energy covering his body surged, forming a giant vortex of darkness that acted as a shield against the incoming infernos. The fire infernos reached near Malfacer in an instant and collided with the dark vortex, causing a dazzling display of contrasting colors and elemental forces. Even though both Volta and Malfacer just used normal skills, the result was anything but normal. The impact of the collision sent shockwaves rippling through the ground, shattering rocks and uprooting trees within hundreds of kilometers of the dimension. The clash of fire and darkness engulfed everything. The sky above them blazed with flames, and the tendrils of darkness moved between the fire like giant snakes. Roar exclamation point. Rumble exclamation point. Before the impact of fire and darkness can fully settle, a terrifying roar sounded, and the entire dimension started to shake. Malfacer quickly looked up and saw a 10,000 meters long chimera type monster with a lion's head, a goat's body, and a serpent's tail looking down on him. I think you should take a look at. The monster was made of deep orange flames, and Volta was standing above its lion head. But what made Malfacer's heart turn cold were the hundreds of fire meteorites which were hovering just above Chimera. Try not to die. Volta grinned, showing his lava filled mouth, and slashed his hand downwards. Rumble exclamation point. Just as he slashed with his hand, the entire dimension started to shake, and all the fire meteorites hovering above Chimera's head started to fall down. This mad demon, Malfacer cursed when he saw hundreds of large meteorites that were covering the entire sky coming down towards him. Dark energy burst forth from his body and turned a large area of ground around him completely black. His eyes shined with dark light, and he raised his hand. Go! Just as Malfacer said, hundreds of sharp black pillars rose from the ground, and clashed with the incoming meteorites. Explosions erupted in the fiery sky, creating a chaotic ballet of destruction. One by one, the pillars met their targets, colliding with the meteorites in dazzling displays of light and power. The deafening cacophony of detonations reverberated across the dimension, leaving the air filled with dust clouds and debris. Since he is already dead, his physical body must be very weak. Malfacer thought as his eyes flashed. He controlled one of the black pillars and shot it towards Volta. Whoosh dash. Volta was looking at the dust-filled sky when suddenly the dust cloud was torn open, and a sharp black pillar came towards him like a bullet. Seeing the pillar coming toward himself, Volta did not move. Roar dash. The fiery chimera he was standing on roared out loud and used its serpent-like tail to destroy the pillar. When Malfacer saw how Volta did not dare to clash against his pillar head-on, his belief that Volta's body is very weak became even stronger. I will beat the sh asterisk t out of this bastard using my hands. Malfacer thought and suddenly shot upwards. Volta was surprised when he saw Malfacer coming towards him, because generally speaking, the physical strength of lava demons is very high, so he can't understand why Malfacer was trying to fight against him at close range. Well, whatever. But he did not care too much about it, and also disappeared from the head of the chimera. Deep orange flames engulfed his body, while black energy covered Malfacer's body. Both of them appeared in front of each other in an instant. The fist covered in fire clashed against the fist covered in dark energy. Boom dash. The world shattering shockwaves swept the entire dimension. Crack dash. Amid the explosion, the sound of bone cracking rang out, and Malfacer was shot downwards like a meteorite. This is the end of this video. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you enjoyed and wish you wonderful rest of the day. The silent rupt is out.